Hopefully everybody can hear us loudly and clearly because, oh boy, mm. tonight's going to be a fun, fun night, I'd like to think, because there was so much that went down this week and uh, there is a lot of us here for tonight. At least I think there will be a lot of us here for tonight to, t uh, to tackle a particular episode that had just recently aired not too long ago and we're all going to give our opinions on that. Well, those that watched the episode anyway did. Uh, so we'll see how things will turn out. And uh, hopefully you guys can hear me loud and clear. If you can, mm. please let me know so I can make sure everything is actually okie dokie. And then we can begin tonight's podcast session of the Pokepod World Podcast. Once again, my name is KG Prestige. Here with me are my buddies TSS and Polly. Uh, our other friends are going to be joining along the way real soon. And uh, yeah, tonight's going to be a fun night. I can't wait to see the shenanigans that are going to go down this week and... Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I can say for now. How's everybody doing in uh, in the call at this moment? Hope you guys are doing fine. Yeah. I just suffered through a few DP fillers, but then one good one. So see, now you, you can finally understand why we always keep complaining about the fillers. <laughs> yes. Twenty six yeah. months. Thank you, Dill. Oh, which reminds me, I still need to revoke your anti poke badge that you haven't given back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here, let me ah. take that real quick. Thank you. I'll make up for it once I finish. I still can't believe that. <laughs> I, I legit still can't believe that. And Zach still chose me to be in his video. Yeah, exactly. Wait a minute. So, did, did you, you lie to him? No, I didn't lie. I've seen the majority of it. There's just a few episodes that, like, there's just a few pieces to the puzzle that I haven't seen, if that makes any sense. How how many are we Plus, talking about here? This okay. The stuff that the stuff that I haven't seen, Zach didn't ask me to talk about. Like he he didn't ask me to do any gym battles or anything like that because he knew that I didn't see the one. So I talked the most about Jesse, Team Galactic, Team Rocket, like the stuff that I was already familiar with. So Brock, I'm actually mm. going to which. Okay, I'm, I'm just, uh, I was just wondering what was going on with that. <laughs> but hey, yeah. at least the video won't came out great regardless. Look, there, but see, there's some, there's some episodes that I've seen a million times over, so, uh, you know, I, yeah, justified somewhat. Justified? I don't know. <laughs> I need ice cream. No, you don't. But anyway, I hope your DP watch is going to go great later then, as you're still progressing through. Also, Dill Pickle coming in with the subby sub. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate uh, the subscription there, buddy. And to those that are tuning in tonight, hello, everyone that are hopping into the stream at this moment. Hope you guys are having a good evening, afternoon, morning. I'm not sure exactly where you guys are at, but I can only hope that... Uh, but you guys are having a good one. And that's all that I can say in this moment. But, um, yeah, so this week, in terms of things that have been going down, uh, not really much has happened that I could say are, like, big, big newsworthy stuff to talk about. We still have, like, little small things to discuss, of course. And, um, you know, but, like, in terms of, like, a main event that went down within this week, I don't really think nothing huge came out, I want to say. For gaming um, side, anyway. I, I know that, like, if you guys are uh, Yokai Watch fans, there was something that happened a few days ago that was this hashtag Save Yokai, if I'm correct, that was going yeah, on. Yeah, Save Twitter. Yokai Watch on Twitter. Yeah, and, and even and even has the and even had the uh, the dub voice actors uh, even getting into the fray, and also and also one of the producers, which was actually, yeah, one of the writers I, actually. I think it, he was the same writer. writer that uh that also got interviewed by us a while ago. That also talked about it as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, David Steinberg, but yes. also the Japan on the Japanese side as well. Yeah, um, we had an honor but, to talk with him, and it was actually really great that time. Still have yeah. the audio somewhere here. <laughs> yeah, which uh, maybe we'll repost it someday. Mm -hmm. Maybe when maybe when this truck gets going. Um, however, though, people have been asking me what was my opinion on that. Oh, on the Save Yokai thing. On the Save Yokai thing, and also there's another thing that I need to talk about too, and that is uh, regarding the next series as well. So, um, by the way, this is not the first time you're going to hear me doing a solo thing. You're going to hear me doing a thing later, but this is the thing on Yokai. So, what do I think about the hashtag? I think it was great. 
um, seeing people actually loving the series, considering that level five, like shut down their American wing about two year, about a year and a half ago. Um, now I think it might convince level five, maybe to at least have Yokai watch four come out in the West because it's a really good fucking game. Also, the consider the fact that Yokai Watch One was ported to Switch. I think it would be a great idea to actually get it out. Um, at least have a translation for that already. So why the fuck not? Um. So also in regards to the anime, um, Yokai Watch Ompu or Yokai Watch with the little freaking note on it, the musical note. Um, that's supposed to start on the 9th of April. Now. Um, going, going again, going on some, um, uh, some parallels, um, like for example, after this week, there's going to be no PM 2019 episode and the status for April 2nd is unknown. Yeah. All we know <laughs> is that the Plusle and Mining is coming, I think. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, that, no, I said happy birthday to me. No episode. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday. April no episode. fools. Happy yeah, birthday. April Monica. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but but yeah. So so getting back to that. So I have the opinion of why Academy will end this week after sixty episodes. Um, considering Bomber. that, yeah, because considering that Pokemon's going on a break next week, and then the following week, and then we have the new series starting on the ninth. This week could probably be the last one. Mm. Uh, considering also that it's an end of a climactic, it's an end of a climactic story plot. So I guess this will be a good opportunity for them to, um, go in that. So yeah, Yokai Watch was trending. I think it was yeah, trending like top three in the West. And I'm like, wow. Um, you know, if it, it you know, people, people still love that series. Yeah, of I, course I, they do. Yes, of course. Now let's talk about that fucking trailer that dropped though last week. And I have a <laughs> concern about it. Okay, so they released about a three-minute trailer. Um, it was basically chronicling like every year of Yokai since 2014, 2014, because that's when the anime started. So they went through the whole thing. And they mentioned they mentioned everything. They mentioned you know the Yokai Watch three elements, and then the Shadow Side, then the then the Yokai Watch exclamation point, and then the uh, Y Academy, which has been dominated for the last year or so. And then we get a shot of Nate or Keita with Whisper and Jibanyan. But the problem that I have right... And, and sorry, uh, Whisper, Komasa, and Jibanyan. But there's only one problem that I see. And that is the watch on his wrist. Um, it looks like it's the first gen watch. And I'm like... So what the fuck are we going to do? Um, because remember, we had on on... On Nate or Keita's original freaking series, we had the original watch, we had the Zero, we had the Dream, and then we had the Elder. So we had four watches. Now it looks like they're going back to the first one, but what's really weird is that they showed the same sequence with him in the, um, in the forest where he's in the Gasha machine. And I'm wondering if this is going to be a soft reboot. Or not. Now, I don't know yet. That's what concerns me right now. Um, will it be a soft reboot, but it will just have all the okay that were in the first, like the like like the currently available ones that were in the first, like in the three or four games, and all of the general generational ones that were either in the, you know, in the shadow side realm. But we'll see what happens. Like, but like I said, it's too early to tell. We'll have to find out either with another trailer or on the 9th of April. But we'll see what happens. Now, most likely what's going to happen is there's going to be promotion probably for Yokai Watch 1 on Switch, even though it's been out for a while now. Um, probably that's one of the main reasons. And it's another point that I'm going to get to later when I, when I talk about the state of the Pokemon anime. And you'll see how this combines together. And, uh, but... For now, I'm being caution, cautiously optimistic, but we'll, we'll see what happens. As for the Save Yokai Watch, if this does, if this has any traction at all, I'd be surprised. 
but we have to find out for a little you know we'll find out in the next few months i guess yeah you don't expect anything to just jump straight away given that they just what recently closed down their their place here so i'm yeah, not expecting but they it always... to suddenly come back to life in a matter of just mere weeks after this but hopefully no, it got enough so. traction uh for well, them to at least, at least if they can at least if they could have maybe someone else do the localization yeah like a different developer then, or something like that like a different well like a like a company like a different company doing the develop like the um the translation yo nintendo <laughs> we'll see what happens get, get, get treehouse to come in and help out with the localization man you guys were nuts with the with the original yokai release on 3ds come on man G give me that part two with reggie <laughs> exactly but yeah but that's uh but that's my but that's my thoughts on the yokai stuff i'm 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 very happy to see that uh there's still attention for it and people still love the series here especially in the west because in 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 japan is still kind of like it's still kind of there and like I said, it's all about changing demographics, which once again, we'll get into my point later on tonight. But um, that's the state of affairs, and we'll see what happens on April the 9th. I just hope, okay. in, in all honesty, I just hope the, the regression isn't there. You know, I, like, there was so much that we took into the series of Yokai Watch, you know, all the characters we met, all the Yokai that was met. I hope all of that doesn't just suddenly get brushed off to the side, you know? I mean, I hope not either. I don't want to see that but book we, back but we again. It'll be empty. <laughs> oh God, yeah. It's like it's like oh yeah, um, oh yeah. Your medallions. Oh yeah, we we fucking put them in the incinerator. Oh, here's a new one. Yeah, like all right, sorry, bye. And then <laughs> New York it, it begins. Was burnable garbage. Oh, and by the way, we stole your watch. Lol, bye. <laughs> He has to go back and revert to the original. I don't like that, man. I think I hope that's a design mistake, and it wasn't actually part of the narrative of the story. And and for the folks that haven't played Yokai Watch, I would highly recommend you play not the first game, not play the second one. Play the second one. Play the second one and play the third one if you can even get a freaking physical copy because the, because Yokai Watch three physical copy for the West, it, you it, you'll find it for like a hundred dollars. Because it it was a very limited release, you could still you could still get it on digital platform, but um, physical copy is next to impossible to find. But Yokai Watch Three, I actually like the mechanics of Yokai Watch Three better than Two. I like the grid system better than the wheel. Yeah, there's a uh, like every Yokai game has a different battle mechanic that keeps things refreshing, but at the same time that also means. That you, the player, are also going to have to, you know, get adjusted to those changes too. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind when you're going to get into the Yokai. And, and also, and also, it has like a whole different strategy too, because mm -hmm. now, because in because in Yokai Watch Three, you'll have um, enemies attacking in a certain. They'll, they'll do a special attack in a grid pattern. They'll in a, a certain pat pattern on the grid because mm -hmm. it's a three by three grid. So then you'll do that. Th then you'll see it in advance, and then you can move your yokai out of the way as opposed to on the wheel where you can only rotate in three at a time so um but you can get it at retail okay. price or maybe at a discount on the eShop though for free yeah yokai watch 4 is a completely different game it's more like a like an active an active uh active battle game basically it's kind of like it's kind of like nino kuni because of course it's the same developer right mm -hmm. so so it's kind of like a, a kind of open world, kind of, because um, you can't really say open world these days anyway. Um, Why? Because it's very cliche and also because everybody it, will call it Breath of Wild or Genshin uh, Impact or, or or fucking yeah, it's an action RPG. Thank you, Ty. It is the game you yeah Unreal Engine Four. That's right. It sadly but can it always really be viewed as like something else, but never what it actually is. I just like how mm. Breath of the Wild is always what they call something when it has a wild area or like a vast world. As if like, like if that was the case, the Grand Theft Auto, I want to see a title called Grand Theft Auto Breath of the Wild. <laughs> the, I mean, GTA 3, I mean, I mean, like that scope, <laughs> just looking at the mountainside and everything. Just the music. Da, 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 
na na. Hey yo, man, motherfucker, can I come in your crib? <laughs> <laughs> man, fuck you. I'll see you at work. <laughs> and then the and then the one music comes with the dun 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 dun. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful, motherfucker. <laughs> you know? uh, I was thinking yeah, it was gonna man. play the Guardi music. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say <laughs> Good Lord. But yeah, so that's a thing, chat. We'll mm-hmm. see what happens though. Fingers crossed that the Yokai series gets a little bit of love in this one. Uh, so, oh what, what, no, are we gonna do that. this every week? No, <laughs> I'm just trying to make a clip out of it. Oh my god, don't worry. Get anyway. out of it. Mm-hmm. It's it's gone. It's gone. Good. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so tonight's gonna be fun. I want to say for uh, for the reaction on our episode impressions, we still got some time to pass by. Tyron, first of all, uh, welcome aboard. I didn't get a chance to say that What's when up? you got in. Uh, how's your day been going, though? It's been all right. It's been all right. Nice. So, have you have anything in regards to well things going down this week that you want to talk uh, about? I don't think anything of importance. I mean, if you're a competitive battling, Player Cup 3 is going to be live streamed uh, on April 10th. So get your Pokemon ready and rank up. I'm going to probably try to do some competitive battling myself. But on April 10th, uh, they're going to be doing some streaming, and then the, the finals will be on the 23rd through the 25th. So that'll be towards the end of next month. Uh, so yeah, make sure you build your teams. Make sure you uh, are set for this uh, series. We're at series what? I want to say series seven. Yeah, so make sure you have your team set for series seven stuff. Uh, other than that, I think they brought the Cyrus event back in uh, Masters, didn't they? That's correct. That but is like correct. the third fucking time, I, or is this the second? Third. Second time. No, I, it actually, feels no, like no, the third. No, Oh, it's, it's, the the third. it's the third. Oh, so it is the yeah, third. Yeah, it feels because like they the had third. the original rerun, and they had the original, then the uh, rerun, and, and now the rerun. The re-run. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jesus Christ! I mean, like, <clears throat> I'm, I'm Masters has pissed me off personally. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do one pulls every time instead of ten pulls. Because every time I do ten pulls, I wind up getting like the same ten fuckers the whole <laughs> every time. <laughs> You're always just They're supposed like, to save until the end of the year, I, buddy, when you I can usually, use it for the- I usually, yeah, I usually wind up getting, like, Kalos and Genova gym leaders. And I'm like, what the fuck? This is another one for my other characters. Been, my luck hasn't been pretty good. My luck hasn't been good lately. But what I do is I just complete the dailies. If you complete all the dailies, you get 80 gems. Then I do other things as well. I keep, I always, like, um, I don't play the game much. I only play, like... 10, 10 battles and that's it and then just refill with the free stamina so that um, then I could just build up from there and um, I don't spend my, I don't spend my gems until <laughs> there's something that I actually want so it's like I have like 20 I have like 18,000 gems right now mm-hmm. well and, time to do my say, dailies 18,000 I already 000. completed my daily so I'm good on that yeah. point. And, and I've been and I've been playing yeah and I've been playing pretty much since day one nice but uh, yeah, that's all it, I we really got for gamer news. There's nothing really um, else like. Uh, there is um, supposedly a 7.50 and 7.55 jailbreak is on the horizon for PS4. Ah, oh, for Mira. Ah, uh, so like tech techy things then. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah. Well, mostly jailbreak and jailbreaks things because. Um, there has been apparently an exploit that was found on 750 that works on 755 in terms of the WebKit root, uh, the WebKit uh, kernel exploit. So, um, and people have had Hen and Mira work on 755. Um, there are st- there are still some stability issues, but for now, on um, people that are on either 505 or 672, they are advised to stay where they are because 755 is not exactly uh, polished yet and also dev tools have to be made and have to be optimized for the new firmware the new uh the newer exploited firmware so stay where you are if you have a um homebrewed custom firm well not custom firmware but a hand or a mirrored um ps4 mm-hmm so that's that's the news for today, and then then this basically this news has been basically coming out for like the last two days. Huh. So, 
folks that care about that, that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, just to also tell folks, for Pokemon-related things, it's kind of been quiet. Although I've been seeing a lot of controversy going down for the TCG scene. Really? It, it's mm. getting it's getting worse every week, man. I'm starting to read stories of just like... Wait, how, wait, what happened to bro. the TCG stream? No, no, not the TCG stream. I'm sorry, just the TCG, like, mm. community. Community. Yeah, what, what's up with them? Normally, I don't hear much about, like... The cards, man. You know how people are scalpers and all oh, that, well, that. But it's shit, gotten yeah. so it's gotten so bad now. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the man has been tilted like for real, for real. Yeah. So what was going down from what I've been reading is like stories of how people who work in the stores itself that sell the TCG stuff, uh, they they mentioned stories about how oh they talked with a mother who wanted to buy some cards for their little kid. And then it turns out that somebody had just showed up maybe like a few minutes before she did and had like bought the entire set out, leaving no cards left in the market for anybody to buy there. Yeah, and somebody buying like a bunch of cereals because the cereal got TC. Oh, no, they don't buy the cereal. What are you talking about? They just straight up rip and open it and leave the cereal as is. That's some jank shit. You never seen that? Damn, y'all janky. No, people do that shit. It's true. I know they do it. That doesn't make it right. I'm so mad about this because it's like I remember when the TCG was just nice and genuine and there were, uh, uh, you know, some people who do purchase it out of the sake of just doing it. Like, I'm not talking about those that that buy bulks and then, you know, actually open cards and keeps them themselves. That's perfectly fine. I'm OK with that. I'm referring to the scalpers that yeah. take those said card packs and resell it at a higher price value only because they know they can make a profit out of it. That's yeah, I, my I'm just like, like, damn, like I bought when they McDonald's did the car thing, I bought one damn Happy Meal and called it a day. I'm not going to fucking rob these poor kids for a couple of starters. If you know, it, well, it's probably because I don't collect the cards. I, well, I collect I collect the ones I can get, but I mostly, if I get in the TCG, it's mostly for, you know, the card game purposes. So the starters they're giving you ain't worth shit in battle for real, but they're supposed to be like McDonald's collectibles, basically. But I'm not so into it to the point where I got to like say fuck you to this kid <laughs> and, and, and buy a crap ton. Like, it's not that serious. You should have showed up serious. earlier, kid, if you wanted to get these card That's packs. That's fucked, though. Like, why the kids got to suffer? Mm, I should have gotten one. Oops. I didn't open mine either. It's still in its little pack. I never got one, so. Damn. I don't, I yeah. don't, I don't know, man. I didn't want it this time it's around. It's just like, yeah, and then the, I heard the ones in the cereal boxes, so I, I might get one cereal box just to sort of have the just pack. Just to say you had too. it. <laughs> yeah, just to have the pack. Because Pokemon, when it comes to... So to their food products, they're not that good. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> I, it reminds I'm, me of the time with the Mario cereal. Ew. Oh, yeah. I'm very particular with Pokemon merchandise. Like, I only like getting stuff that I really, really like. Or mm. that's obviously, like, a lot of the cars that I have are actually gifts from other people. And a lot of yeah. them are Polyworld. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Mm. Well, like the OKG with the Bur well, Burger King is apparently canceled now. But <laughs> oh no, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> wait, what happened to Burger King? What the fuck? Oh, no, yeah. wait, 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 Tyrone, do you not know what happened to Burger King recently? No. Oh my God, we we have to tell you the story. <laughs> what the fuck? It's Burger King. Okay, J just to. Uh, just to explain the situation that happened with Burger King, let's just say a tweet has gone sour with one of their statements because I believe this happened on National Women's Day, if I'm correct, or International yeah, Women's Day. Yeah. So Burger King came out of nowhere. Burger King UK, to be exact, came oh, out with one single tweet that stated the following, women belong in the kitchen. Ha! That's funny. <laughs> Wait, but yeah, here's but the it thing. Was that, that was the only <laughs> thing they wrote in that tweet ha! for about a while until they replied again to that same tweet where they actually explain what's happening. And then the following, it says here, uh, if they want to, of course, 
Yet only twenty oh, percent of baby. chefs are women. Yeah. We're on a mission to change the gender ratio in the restaurant industry by empowering female employees with the opportunity to pursue a culinary uh, career. We are proud to be launching a new scholarship program, which will help female Burger oh, King employees pursue their culinary. They Cedric dreams. Juniper, they ass basically. They <laughs> Cedric Juniper them. <laughs> Bro, no, I can't believe all that women they- belong in the kitchen. <gasps> As chefs for Burger King. <laughs> 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 because but, the, people, the problem is people can't put two and two together. Uh, oh, but but well, they made but, the tweet well, listen, afterwards. Man, I'm so just going to say, Burger King deserves all the hatred because I want you guys to take a look at this image I'm going to have on stream. What well, else look at, this, look oh, at the no. size of that, f- that uh, text for women belong in the kitchen. And then look how tiny the rest of the words are. <laughs> You should have read show je- jealous chew. You should have read the fine the print. Uh, uh, look at the fine print. Look how fucking small it is right down here. Uh, it's so, so puny down there. I <laughs> mean, that's fucked. Uh, it. I love interesting it. And this happened on National wo- International Women's Day too. Women's Day, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But go I'm on, not saying anything. I'm just. Uh, I, I, it was just an observation Ooh. I made, but um, all women belong in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. But at least I have that pol- that gold plated poly world you got me. So yeah, you, oh, yeah. you got that before yeah. the whole thing went down. <laughs> so yeah. you're, I mean, you're good. <laughs> I'm gonna put oh, it yeah. this way because Burger King is one of my favorite one restaurants, and I I'm sorry, like uh, the burger isn't fem- uh, the burger isn't anti feminist. They are. Um, <laughs> uh, separating the burger from I, the place. Exactly. I never tasted the Whopper. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Then again, though, you could separate the burger from the bun. I never tasted the Whopper mm-hmm. and been like, "Oh, this tastes very anti-women today." Like, the- <laughs> <laughs> my burger tastes like women. <laughs> would you Would you like a side of misogyny? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. Hi, hey, Prov. Hi, Prov. I, I thought he was also uh, going to bring out the Burger Chew image. Oh, well, no, Burger a, Chew is, is a one of a kind uh, thing. Yeah. At, least, at least the good thing is, at least Burger King, their their milkshake machines, their ice cream machine works about 97% of the time versus 40% of the time. From I'm just saying, first of all, the UK Burger King said that, all right? That means American Burger King. Yeah, but the, like, the, funny thing is, the funny thing is, actually, is that the, that the picture that KG just posted is actually from the New York Times. Ah, oh, shit. The yeah, American so it, Burger it doesn't King actually make like, things better. In that case. Ah, we don't. We don't. That was UK that did that. Uh, have it your way. You, with it. UK, yeah. <laughs> have it your way in the well, UK. Actually, well, actually, if, well, actually, if you want, if you want to see if your local McDonald's milkshake uh, ice cream machine is up, go to mcbroken.com. <laughs> There's a website for that. Mine. There is a website. Yeah, yeah go, to, go. There's this one. Hold on a second. I, I'm writing this shit right now. I mean, McBroken. I can tell you. I can tell you some secrets because I worked at McDonald's. The McDonald's ice cream machine was not broke. It was never broke. Motherfuckers McBroken, just didn't want to fucking do the work. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna All right, I'll, I'll drop, I'll drop they it just, in the chat. They yeah. just didn't want to do it. Like, that's the reality. If you want the cold, hard reality of it, it always works. Nobody yeah, just didn't want to fucking com. do the work. Well, so apparently, so so, th- I've known about this for like the last several months. But the thing is, though, um, the reason why this was found was because a guy uh, a guy found <laughs> out that, McDonald- that, the, that the ice cream machine talks to a central server. So you could find out if your freaking ice cream machine is broken. Also, Ooh, because, working. Uh, also, because I worked there, I can also give the other reason why it was broken most of the time. So the reason it was broken most of the time was because they were using an ice cream machine from the, the fucking 70s. <laughs> that bitch <laughs> hadn't been updated at all. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> this is a thing. It's crazy. McDonald's. Yeah, no, you can click on the. You click on the dot. It'll actually tell you exactly. It'll McDonald's, tell you exactly the, stat- the status. McDonald's really? are just oh, now. Yes, yeah, yeah. From, from working there, I can tell you. <laughs> the from working there, from working there, I can tell you. Go on. Thank you. From working there, I can tell you that they just now updated the machines to be computerized. Back then, they were all in, like, the fucking 70s. Like, just old fucking machines that were work- that are, like, literally older than us. They're, like, 40 years old and 50 years old. There was no fucking way they were going to work properly. <laughs> the shit. 
either hadn't been cleaned or hadn't been worked on. Uh, so that's where we get our freaking food from through that shit. Yeah, yeah. we're we're, we're yeah, just because, now fixing them. Yeah, because yeah, because most of those the, most of those milkshake machines were fucking built were fucking built and also purchased in the Ray Kroc era of the nineteen sixties and nineteen seventies. Exactly, like they were made so like so early on. Nobody just took the time to go in and replace the machine because the machine's huge. It's fucking big. So nobody wanted to take the time to like take it apart and take it out of their restaurants. So they thought it was just easier to do the occasional one year maintenance and then leave. That's it. <laughs> that is horrible. I, I'm a bounce. <laughs> now I want a, like a Wendy's milkshake or Frosty. I mean, I, we haven't even talked about Wendy's, but now I'm craving it. And I just had ice cream. Yeah, 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 yeah. The frosty, the frosty hits different. <laughs> I never had a frosty. So. The frosty's really good. Yes. Mm. Um, and that's coming from a guy who doesn't eat like a lot of sweets. Yeah, mm. I always thought you would be a sweets kind of person. No, I like tart stuff. I like salty. I like vinegar. -y. Um, you weird. I got it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, <laughs> I like I like pickled things. Like if anything's pickled. Ah, you, you, you pickled. <laughs> <laughs> you pickled piece of shit. <laughs> Tyrone is not a sweet tooth, says Rob. So no, nah, apparently. Nice no. pickle. But, uh, oh, God damn it! <laughs> wait, Polly, are you the person that like sticks the fry in the fucking ice cream? No, I, I I I sprinkle my fries with malt vinegar. Actually, what the fuck? Yeah, I'm gonna try people do it. Vinegar. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yep. gonna try it. I'm gonna try it once. If I if I die, I'm I'm haunting your ass. <laughs> I also don't have a huge sweet tooth. I don't know why I'm craving ice cream right now, but I I don't. Hold on, usually. let me just go commission Tyrone the God Four real quick before yeah. anything happens in case of emergencies. <laughs> He's not supposed to be called until 2028. <laughs> so, well, excuse <laughs> me, I didn't realize somebody was gonna go into a suicide mission. The prototype is unstable. The prototype is unstable. Release him <laughs> now. You're trying to kill us all. Future, everything's chrome. I'm but, sick no, in my Polly, if I, Polly, yeah, but What happens if I want to use Firefox? Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Polly, if the salty fucking vinegar fry kills me, I swear to God, I'm throwing a McFlurry at your ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he says so Tyrone's were branded in 2028. <laughs> we'll see you guys in seven years. <laughs> throw a piece of American cheese, because I don't like American cheese. <laughs> Who the fuck threw? I'm just gonna throw one in there. Funny, funny, thing, funny thing is, I still remember. I still remember Firefox when it was pre-version one. We're talking about fucking 2004. <laughs> this is the weirdest pod we've. <laughs> Actually, no. It's not. Makes me hungry, and I don't want gonna, that right now. At I'm just 10 gonna throw a slice night. of. I'm just gonna throw a slice of craft cheese at. No. <laughs> it's like the stupid I cat can't. meme. You just throw the cheese in the yeah. person's face. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's not real cheese. Don't People. tell me that. I, I want to believe it's wait, real. Wait, and neither is wait, wait, real, real cheese. I want to real cheese. cheese is it, is it, does that mean? Does that mean we get to fucking have the, the what? The white rose American cheese is made out of fucking oil and shit. Oh <laughs> my god! But I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was, the, uh, speaking about grilled trees, for some reason I'm remembering that Elmer Fudd song. For some reason, I want the wheels cheese, that the cheese. In. The cheese, the cheese that comes out of the fucking wick boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I even rapped to that song with all those W's, man. That was a weird. Uh, the Warm and the Martian one was good too. I love that show. Oh man! I, I, also, speaking of which, there's like been a resurgence recently with the Looney Tunes show on social media too. It's yeah. actually pretty great. I'm loving it. Uh, oh, no, listen, I, it makes me so sad. People didn't appreciate it during the time it was out, but are beginning to appreciate the quality of the show after it's over. Yeah. Hmm. I would have preferred it during the time because uh, yeah, I think the Looney Tunes show is so criminally underrated, man. Yeah, it has like, it just has this the dry humor to it that I, that I like. That's so good. It's a Especially Daphne. 
Yeah. I think a lot of shows, like, it's mostly due to, like, now that you're older, you can start to understand some of the jokes. Yeah, that's why I want to rewatch that. a lot of old cartoons, because I, I know up, for a fact there were some old jokes. I don't know there. why, but we're going back to the UK again, but I don't know <laughs> why. Uh, <laughs> Car- Cartoon Network UK uh, had randomly had some Johnny Bravo clips, and I clicked on one, and he's going to the doctor, and he's like, and the doctor's like, now what's wrong with you, Johnny? And he's like, uh, well, sometimes after I eat, I get an occasional lack of a uh, loss of appetite. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> at nighttime, I go unconsciousness for hours, mostly until the sun comes up. And I'm just like, oh, this is actually funnier than I remembered it. <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> we got to watch it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like older jokes just hit different now that you're older and can understand them. Like, like I know the Rugrats. Like, obviously, that's getting a lot of like things going because of it's mm. getting the reboot. But I watched some of the older Rugrats episodes, and like the adults starting to be a lot funnier now. Like, I know, I, I love the adults. Yeah, yeah, like Stu, Stu is literally like the the best fucking adult on the planet. It, like they're doing their taxes. <laughs> he's like, you have a moldy pack of french fries in here? Why? I always keep a record of everything I buy. Well, well then why don't you just keep the receipt? It's <laughs> <laughs> so angry at him. But it's so true, regardless. So, and then Phil and Drew are making, like, I guess, they're like, they're making, like, breakfast for everybody. And he's like, you make sure you get enough eggs? He's like, yeah, I want to make sure I got enough. So I bought a gross. A gross? Dude, that's 144 eggs. And he goes, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing like, control of my life. Yeah, he just looks he looks at the eggs and is like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna do with all these eggs? <laughs> oh my god. He's just looking at him like shit. And then I look at the comment section, and you know the comment section is tripping because he goes he goes the they go Stu says I've got a I bought a Google Plex of eggs. A Google Plex? <laughs> Dude, that's what he like said. <laughs> <laughs> and, <Oops>. the, <laughs> and then the comment section had another one where it's like I wanted the eggs go I wanted to make sure I had enough so I bought a gross of stews a gross of stews that's 144 stews and the eggs go oops <laughs> <laughs> yeah Ren and Stimpy as well Ren and Stimpy oh my god especially when especially when um, the original you know, 91 through 95, I want to say. That was, uh, or 91, 93, especially the first two seasons. You really get to get to see the the really mature humor. Yeah. I I got freaked out from watching the first episode. I think Ren and Stippy was a little bit uh, before my time. My mom wouldn't let me watch Ren and Stippy. My mom <laughs> loved Ren and Stippy. Oh, of course she liked it. Yeah, my- <laughs> My mom wouldn't let me watch it because I think she just said it was too graphic or some shit. I don't know. Wow, my mom, my mom let me watch that shit all the fucking time. I wasn't my, allowed to my watch favorite, the. My favorite, my, 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 I don't remember. My the favorite, pop, wait, what? 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 The pop yeah, pop. because one of the characters looked like I think. What is it? The one that looks like the devil. Oh, him! him. You talking about him? Yeah, him, him. Yes. Yeah. His name is him, yeah, by the way. For, for those of y'all who didn't watch Powerpuff Girls, his name is him. I don't <laughs> know if I pair. I don't know. Also, uh, yeah. Um, no, no, go ahead. No, I was about to say, going back to Ren and Stimpy, one of my favorite, one of my favorite um, scenes is the is the random scene where you see, I don't know, Stimpy. Stimpy was in the bathroom or something, and they had to they had to lift down. They they fucking drop down a fucking sumo wrestler to fucking warm up the toilet seat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what you remember. <laughs> yeah, and of course, and of course, the scenes with fucking Powder Toast Man, because fucking it's you know, yeah, ironic. It's like it's iconic. You know, Gary Owens. I mean, come on. Gary oh o- man, I like I stated before. Gary I need o- to like rewatch them again just because it feels so. Uh, it feels like it'll be a different experience. Oh yeah, of course. Like I was like a lot yeah, of these you'll, jokes you'll ha- hit different. I think that's the that's the beauty of it. It's like. You can have your childhood experience with that show and it won't get tarnished when you are an adult now because now you're you're watching it from a different perspective on it and it just yeah. makes things better in the long run for me personally. So yeah. Mm. Mm. 
That's why I said I gotta rewatch some of these classics again, man. It, it feels like oh it's, yeah, Rocco, like, Rocco's modern. I life I always used to think of I Angelica's love Rocco. Hi. <laughs> I always used to think that Angelica's mom was just like this busybody, like like she just was this busybody. But you gotta really listen to what she says on the phone with Jonathan. Like, holy shit! <laughs> like, damn. She goes, she goes. Make sure you have a uh, Angelica prepped for college. College. She's three. If Angelica's gonna survive in this male-dominated world, she's gonna have to fly down. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit! What? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the helicopter parents are already at that time. It's crazy. Somebody brought this up, and I was really curious to hear about this, given that we're talking about old school cartoons. Yeah, the mm -hmm. CW, they're making a live action Powerpuff Girls, aren't they? What? Wait, Why? What? Oh, you no. Wait, you don't know this? Hold on a second. I, I'll, no. yes, I do. I do. I, think I heard the rumors, but I didn't want to, like. Okay. Let me explain. What it real I will, quick. And, I will, and what I will do is I will link to the I will link to the video where you have the fucking guy open up the fucking freezer that found the fucking rancid meat in it and fucking having the fucking gagging for fucking two minutes straight. And I have the fucking video clip for that. I will send anybody that fucking clip if you even mention that shit. I think you had a record. But uh, you said fucking seventeen <clears throat> times in one sentence. <laughs> We're keeping track of that. <laughs> I was. I was counting it. Nice, but no. Okay, allow me to explain for those who are unfamiliar with it, because I do have Send a little you bit that of a shit. Summary. Okay, I gotta ask my friend for that. Okay, <laughs> uh, yeah. it says here. Well, apparently the CW has found its Powerpuff Girls. Uh, <gasps> I don't know if this is true. I'm just reading what I'm seeing here. Uh, it says here is written by Diablo Cody and other things. Apparently, the Powerpuff Girls follows the three girls who used to be America's pint-sized superheroes, except now they're disillusioned 20-somethings who resent having lost their childhood to crime They didn't leave that oh, fucking God. show alone. Every time they touch it, something bad happens. And every time you touch, I feel the static. No. Oh, Johnny. I reckon it'll be a disaster already. I mean, Donnie is right. They're going to Riverdale it. And, and, I'm, I'm and, saying this from someone who watched the I entire show. Either. I'm saying this from someone who watched the entire oh, show and then watched it again that. and then watched it again on Hulu uh, recently. Even the final season of the original show was kind of like, ugh, was kind of, was them kind of fucking up. Like, you could tell, like, shit was getting weird. Towards the final season, I right. felt after that it needed to die, like kill it, like that is it. Let's just keep the treasured memory of seasons one through three or whatever, and then leave it the fuck alone. Because think, every uh, time they bring like, it back, I feel basically it, kind of fell off. Like it ran its course too long. Like it, it should. Have yeah, been every been. time they bring the Powerpuff oh, Girls back in some way, shape, or form, it gets worse and worse no, and worse like, and worse. Like, all right. Yeah, uh, for Evo, don't touch it. For Ebo, I will find. I I will I will get you that freezer video probably like tomorrow. I will. And uh, if you don't, if you, if you can remind me tomorrow, that's great. If not, then I'll probably post it during a stream either tomorrow or this week. Yeah, because I remember they had like that one really reboot, not not the reboot that most people know, the one that's that I guess is currently running on Cartoon Network still. I don't know. But the, they had the reboot where they were animated differently. Like, they had a different art style for that one. Oh, and that was looked, like a special. Wasn't yeah, it? that was a special, and it looked gross, and it was bad. Oh, then they it. then they had the other thing they did with them recently where... The reboot. They, uh, yeah, and then the, the reboot where fucking Blossom and Bubbles are twerking for some dumbass reason. What? Uh, that's stupid. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget about the controversy with the writer, like, self-inserting himself into the yeah, show and making him, like, Blossom's oh. crush or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they made, like, a, they, they made one where a, a pony acted like a unicorn, so it was supposed to be, like, a transsexual episode or some shit. Like they, they no, just leave it alone. Leave it alone. First of all, y'all got rid of Miss Bellum, so that 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 y'all already. Fucked the explanation up. for how they got rid of her in the show is still dumb to this day. Sarah J. Bellum, and then she was badass in the original. Why don't? Yeah, that was yeah. When what she, about the princess? Yeah, um, princess Mordox? I love her. She's my favorite. Yeah, character. she reminds me of Burgundy. <laughs> Cause princess, the hair. Princess Morbucks is the best character in that fucking show. Yeah. And I don't fight anybody who says otherwise. I like her. She <laughs> With might money. have been my favorite. <laughs>
with money. <laughs> oh yeah, then there's Powerpuff Girls Z. I didn't watch Girl uh, Powerpuff Girls Z, so I don't have like a history of it. I don't know. I That's a think Flash, that... isn't it? Flash anime? Yeah, no, no, it's not a Flash. It's an actual series. <laughs> I, I, sorry, anything with a Z, I immediately think Flash anime. Yeah, because, yeah, like, because of Super that... Mario Brothers. Exactly. Z. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember. I don't remember much. I just know they weren't sisters in Powerpuff Girls Z. I remember that. I remember that. Oh yeah, they were separate. Or yeah, they're not sisters. They're just friends, and I don't, I don't like that because their whole dynamic is supposed to be that they're triplets, and I don't know. So take that with as a grain of salt. But I know every time they touch Powerpuff Girls, it turns into a problem. Also, I think they had powers. I think they had weapons. I think they used weapons in that one. That defeats the whole purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Chemically radiated girls? No, they use weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Chemical X. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of curious. I just really want to see this whole pop of Girls thing just for the shit that it's going to go down with. Like I feel yeah, like it's going I, to cause remember, nothing but problems. They had a fourth sister, too, which was Bunny, and that was like a Down Syndrome girl that ended up blowing up. But then like, in, the re yeah, in, the re in the reboot, they have another sister who's black and has long legs, like really long, like, like Jesus Christ, what? <laughs> like she doesn't even look like, it clashes so badly with the other girls. And I don't, I don't think we ever got like a real answer to that. I think she just left, didn't she? I think her name was Bliss. Yeah, Point I think the matter is Bliss. that reboot sucks, man. Now the movie was pretty good. I liked the movie. The movie was good. The first one. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the reboot had a movie. No, 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 no. The Powerpuff Girls movie. Oh, yeah. So okay, the, I loved it because that's supposed story. to be the origin story for it's them. It's the origin story, yeah. It's how they started. Mm -hmm. And I really yeah. loved it also because it kind of made me feel sympathy for, um, uh, surprisingly, Mojo Jojo. Well, yeah. yeah, he got the short end of the stick in that whole situation. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you, you kind of feel bad for him because it's like, holy shit, they're responsible for what happened to him. It was me. I make a power Uh thank you, Donnie, for blessing us with that OST that I wish I could play but cannot play at this current time because you know, obvious reasons we're talking. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll of definitely course take I Google it and like the first category that comes up is or the second is is pregnant. It's like I'd rather not pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, uh, if you love old school stuff, know that this is going to be the year of announcements of like bringing back uh, classics. Uh, yeah, I'm getting real sick of that that, that culture. Like, I'm, I'm getting sick of reboot culture. Wait, <laughs> apparently, I, I didn't even know about the Cowboy Bebop thing. Oh yeah, they're doing another, an Netflix oh, yeah, live that. action for it. They completed yeah, season one, apparently. Yeah. Oh, look, see, now Cowboy Bebop, they're doing a live action of that. That Hey, I, I can give that a pass only because mm. Cowboy Bebop didn't do any like crazy things like it's mostly it's literally just a bounty hunter in space that yeah. we, we tackled sci-fi we tackled bounty hunters that, that, it's not like he has fly super fly, uh, yeah, powers he doesn't to have, fly yeah he doesn't break the realm of fiction I mean there's occasionally some things you see here and there in Cowboy Bebop that's like oh that's kind of weird like when they all died by the shit that was in the fridge too long or some shit like yeah mm. but nothing that really breaks the realm of reality yeah, I'm curious to see it animated. That's the one thing I just yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah. yeah, Omar, I also know about that. I'm very happy with that. If you got a chance to get the Pyra and Mitra figures, uh, congratulations. I believe they had already sold out though. So if you haven't had a chance to get them during their second run through, uh, tough luck, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Um. So uh -oh. I have one thing. Uh -oh. Um. It's not, it's, don't worry, it's, it's not to change the subject. I just wanted no, to bring no, it up. I think everybody had their talk yeah. on the TV things anyway. For those who aren't in the JPR server, our good buddy, Filippo Depo, just uh, recently uploaded a clean version mm -hmm. of the uh, Ashes black and white theme, like the da 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 like, so check that out if you uh, what do you get a chance and it looks like he's going to be uploading some higher quality tracks um, in the future. You know what that means? We can finally get rid of that stupid thud noise in the black and white title <laughs> theme song. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, when everybody <laughs> like you hear the song and then boom, <laughs> just in like the minute yeah. and thirty seconds. Like that's the one bit in that song that's holding that full version from coming out. If Philippa could somehow work around that noise and make it well, happen, I mean, uh, bro, well, that'd remember, be great. You, remember, remember using AI. So AI using AI is the reason why we have that freaking amazingly reanimated version of Never Gonna Give You Up. Yeah, oh like, my God, technology has scary. become so advanced that now they can take classics and r somehow revive them in 4K 60 frames per second. I, I don't understand the 60 frames part, but like it, technology has advanced so far now that people that j just common folks out there can take use of this and create things you would never expect to see a decade ago man it's really incredible yeah like like uh like takashi like like takashi freaking singing uh Polly. well no no no, no. I'm, i was okay. gonna ask Polly. Okay. sorry Is that no, right? no i was about to say no 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 because because oh. because because of because of ai you have all the fucking deep fakes like freaking uh takashi singing what is love and, and, and that's the one that uh, natalie made my yeah <laughs> Polly. Yeah. quick Quick question. Yes. So you said there's a clean version of Ash's thing from Best uh, from Best Wishes, right? Yeah, that's the one he just he just did, posted. Did he does he have an XY rendition of it too? Because there's a slight difference in the XY version. Ooh, I wonder. Uh, well, he says. And the only reason I know this is because I watched Ash versus Grant today, so that's probably why. He probably didn't make it yet, but I'm sure no. he's working yeah, on it. It uses slightly it's uses slightly deeper instruments. Was the black and white remix theme used heavily in the X and Y series? Try Mostly when Ash did badass shit, so pretty much yeah, a lot. Yeah, <laughs> like ninety three <laughs> episodes, I say best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was used most noticeably it was used when Froki fought uh beat Onyx in the Grant fight. Okay, so yeah, I do recall that, but I don't remember it playing anywhere else. I think it's only because I've just been more focused on a lot of other things in the anime, like well, like, of course, the animation itself. You know, he was like, "Get him out to me, Zahadot." <laughs> <laughs> I love that track. And then he used Don Seki Uji Uji. Yeah. So, Filippo, I'm only going to be asking for three songs from you now. Uh, give me the black and white title theme. I'm just asking. Give me the X and Y uh, super training song, the one that only got used like two times or three times in the entire anime series. And uh, give me whatever third song you think would be great. Give me from some. Oh, he's here. Best. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you. Much appreciated for that. Yeah. Uh, but Filippo, I don't have it yet. There's less sources for that one, but I still want to give it a shot. Don't worry. You have technology by your side. Technology. So you're fine. I mean, yeah, of course I know, Filippo. I'm just saying, I don't know. You can either get it to me tomorrow or maybe a decade from now where AI has gotten so advanced that you can actually do that sort of thing. But find a way to get it working for me. <laughs> I, I want my uh, Misty to the rescue from Pokemon 2000 back since uh, the good old company that shall not be named took it down. Thank you very much. GG. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's all I could say on that. <laughs> oh my god, GG. But nah, seriously though, for those who really love to hear the anti poke music and stuff that have yet to actually be officially released, check out Filippo Depot's uh, Twitter. Like, uh, dude has a Twitter link that has a lot of the tracks that he's done, ripped, and all that jazz. And you I want like to Sanders the theme on there so badly. <laughs> it's so good. Of course, uh, what, what's going to happen is w w with uh, with Filippo, we're also going to put it on PM.net as well because that's going to be because uh, that's going to we'll probably use that as the samples because we have the the database for unreleased music, so we're going to see that soon enough. And uh, that that'd be great. That's a good uh, collaboration. I also like the Elite yeah, Four Filippo theme for X and Y uh, on it in the anime. The the Elite Four theme in X Y is so good. You know, honestly, I don't really remember much about the X and Y theme. Oh, they they yeah. use the Elite Four theme in the battle of, with Ash and Grant, and they also use it when Alon fights a uh, Seabolt. Huh. Okay. They play the whole thing when Alon fights Seabolt. Actually, it's so good. And the legendary theme, all oh, they use that dun, when. Dun, uh, dun, dun. Uh, yeah, they by used the way, they use that like during the dance sequence. Yeah, they by used the it during the dance episode. So, by the way, the English version of Coco's theme is coming out tomorrow. I am so excited for that because I love the original version. And I've heard a lot of Beverly songs that has been done both in Japanese and in English. Uh, there's a 
even uh, for Pokemon, they did it before with the uh, movie I Choose You, you know, and also has done many songs like for Fruits Baskets, did a Japanese and an English version for that song. Uh, Azura Lane also got one as well from Beverly, too. So, like, she's been hitting it out the park with these songs lately. And I am so excited to see just how this one's going to sound like, especially if they fix that one little issue that I think a lot of people had uh, with the original. And that was, um, uh, what, what's the correct word for it? The way the vocals were kind of like overshadowed <laughs> by the music. Well, the, the mix. The, the need, mix. There we improve, go. The mix. I... They need to improve the mix because, like I said, the, pro the problem is the drums on that track are way too fucking high. Mm. Filippo, and, and at also, me when also, you get a chance to get it, please. I, I, <laughs> I want to take, I, I need to review that shit. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm curious to see how it's going to sound. I really do hope that it, uh, it comes out fantastic. That, that's all I can say. And given that it's Beverly, who's done all these songs that I just mentioned, even like for video games, if you played uh, Astral Chain, also helped out, contribute uh, some of the songs there too. Freaking fantastic songs as well. Uh, you'll get a kick out of this one. Fingers crossed anyway. And uh, hey, TPCI, you know, you got a song right here. You you want to insert that into the no, Coco movie? No? Okay, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried, man. I, they didn't want to listen to me this time around for some reason. All right. Well, you know what time it is now, folks. It's it's that hour mark. I think we managed to get everything we wanted to say across for now. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of viewers for tonight. Thank you guys so yeah, much. We yeah. really appreciate it. Once again, everybody, you know, before we continue on, of course, we always love and appreciate your support every single step of the way. Mm -hmm. Even like just coming in to listen to us tonight, it yeah. helps us greatly. So if you can do us a favor, make sure to, you know, of course, follow us here on this platform. If you haven't yet, uh, make sure to follow us on the Pokepod world as well on Twitter and even on our YouTube channel as well. And uh, to be, you know, notified when we drop new videos and videos that we've done here on this channel over there on YouTube. So you can watch all the previous episodes and all that jazz as well. Uh, and if you want to go the extra mile, if you have Amazon slash Twitch Prime with you, you, you can actually subscribe here for free to get some cool little emotes and uh, who doesn't like free stuff. So, yeah, at the end of the day, your contribution like this, just being here tonight is something that really makes us uh, very happy. So thank you guys so much for your love thank and support. You. Now, with all that being said, we have uh, a doozy for tonight. This is an episode that I honestly think has done nothing but just cause an insane, insane amount of controversy that I personally feel didn't need to happen like as big no. as it is. But I honestly think that the fault came at uh, at. Should the... we go? Should we go from positive to negatives? Okay. No, I'm gonna go last. Well, oh, You're gonna go last. Oh, okay. So we're going negative to positive. So, so negative to positive. All right. So yeah, but yeah, but it's gonna be negative to positive, and then we're gonna get to the state of the anime. Uh oh, which... I think my my mm. OBS just for okay. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, well, because which means I'm gonna be going last because there is, uh, there is gonna be an editorial at the end of this, and it's gonna be why the fuck are we here? How the how the hell did we get here? Mm. Okay. I mean. I have I have just one thing specific to say, thing to say about it. So I I, so I guess So Polly go ahead and go first. Right. Then. I do not have a problem with the fact that Go cook, caught Grookey. In fact, my problem with the episode has literally nothing to do with Go or Grookey. Um I think I was telling these folks at like 5 in the morning last night last this morning. Oh, um, that <laughs> My problem with the episode lies with Team Rocket and not even just with this episode, obviously with Journeys as a whole, where it's like they're getting, I, I just feel like they're getting shoehorned into the same old plots. But they, it's like I'm watching DP and I'm realizing, okay, now I'm going to have to get through a billion fillers with the same Team Rocket plot, right? And then we and then we get to best wishes and we get to XY, we get to Sun and Moon. And that was thankfully over with, even though all the even though the modern era also has its own set of issues. But they broke free of that formula formulaic um, that formula. I don't know what I'm saying. Whereas Team Rocket shows up 
Um, and I feel like we've gone back to that. Like, I feel like it was just lazy writing with the way that Go caught Grookey. Like, I think Terrell was saying, I think you, you were even saying, Kevin, that it would have been an interesting concept if there was this back and forth between Go and Team Rocket and who would ultimately end up with the Grookey. And if Grookey made that decision to want to stay with Team Rocket and be their Pokemon or not, you know? So that's just my ongoing problem and, of course, with this episode. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that or you want to save a little bit more for later into uh, discussion? Uh, I think I think Grookey is so cute. So I have nothing, I have no problem with it. But uh, I hope we, I hope we see more of it. And now, now that Go has all three starters, I mean, I just, I just want to see more of them, man. Hoping like, we'll see more of a Pokemon and journeys. <laughs> Hell, even Cinderace <laughs> is taking a backside. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm sorry if I'm not very uh, eloquent or articulate today. I just did a final, so I'm just. <laughs> No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. We we tend yeah. to act this way in the end anyway during these sessions. Yeah. <laughs> we just we just let loose during these pod. We use these podcast sessions as a way to let steam out. <laughs> Let's yes. just say that. <laughs> so yes, we just we just the, hide it. In- <laughs> the Roketathon treatment is uh, I'm not very happy with it. So. All right. All right. So let me go and uh, talk a little bit about my opinions on it then. So I, I do want to address a couple of things. First of all. Uh, let us talk about the elephant in the room. I feel bad for what they did to Suicune in this episode, man. They did oh, his yeah. ass dirty. Why didn't he use Suicune today? No, they got his ass in the me. background. Just take a look right there behind. And just during the Pelipper scene when he went to pick up the <laughs> Pokeball and they just had his ass handed once again. Every week we keep seeing the Suicune just getting his ass handed to him, man. Whether it be caught inside the stupid ball or getting his ass mauled by hunters. It absolutely sucks, man. So, first of all, I feel bad for Sweet. We're just getting disrespect in this episode. This is what happens to the legendary beast of water after Go caught it. I just want y'all to know that, by the way. Yeah. I can't believe the cameras caught that shit. Nobody did anything about it either. Oh, well. But, uh, okay, let's talk about the actual episode in itself. First <laughs> first of all, let's begin uh, with the beginning part of this episode. Uh, the dream sequence Nobody cannot deny the fact in this statement here. That was pointless as hell, man. Pointless. No, that, that was really, really pointless. pointless. That, that just did nothing but cause more uh, controversy in the long run, which, by the way, was unintentional controversy. But still, regardless, it was mm. something that they did, and uh, people are going to point out on that. And ultimately, it really didn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. That was the only time we even got to hear Go's parents, like the VAs, even make an appearance in this episode because they didn't show up anywhere else, which I thought was interesting. Uh, personally, I felt like the parents' uh, story, the theory that people were going with, I thought that was a cool concept where it was like, oh, Go's parents bought, or not bought, but they got the Grookey for Go as like a present from them because they haven't really interacted much with Go and they thought, you know, giving a Grookey would be nice and all, which would explain nope. why the Grookey is attached to Go. Y'all not- made the biggest mistake. <laughs> it's journeys. Why y'all thinking so hard? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man. Every week I keep trying to figure out, like, will they redeem That's themselves? That's the problem this time? you're thinking. <laughs> I'm what sorry. Are you thinking for? Listen, man, I'm just hoping we get to... You don't need your brain for this show. <laughs> okay, but now let's talk about the uh, the quote-unquote bond that happened between <laughs> Go and Grookey. You know, th- this truly is a bond phenomenon because I cannot for the life of me believe that Go and Grookey actually bonded with each other in this episode given that a majority of the time we get to see grookey taking a nap on the arm so it's not necessarily interacting with go in fact most of the interactions with go is it bonking it on the head which i did ask for i if you recall in one of my previous podcast sessions i did request them for the monkey to beat the shit out of go so i'm very happy that got true so i'll give it a plus point for that uh but i need to now see it as a thwacky given that now go has it uh so Fingers crossed. But, you know, Go and Grookey, they didn't interact at all. Like, if you think about it, the only thing that we got to see was that Grookey was attached to the arm. Grookey seemed to be happy about it. Uh, it bonks Go on the head. It bonks on everybody else. Messed up Kohado's hair. Gets them all electrocuted. Uh, and just does nothing but cause chaos throughout the city. 
It, it messed up this Dodrio for some reason. It messed up this Marowak, which I did like that. <laughs> like, I like your cut G smack in the back on the Marowak. Yeah. So I thought that was great. Um, but yeah, like, for the most part, Grookey and Go, they never really interacted. In fact, I don't know why people keep saying it's always the Go and Grookey scene. Because if I recall correctly, Ash is there too. So, I mean, shouldn't Ash also be, you know, getting that bond as well? But, is it like, you know, there are things like these that keep getting in my head. Um, and we got to the PC scene. I like that Ash was the one that was kind of suggesting this idea about kind of checking into us, maybe seeing if they got information about, like, what they could think about for the Grookey, where it could have been. And then that's when they bring in the plot twist, which I thought was the best part about this episode when this happened <laughs> so they revealed that this pokemon belonged to team rocket's gotcha machine for some reason the pelipper somehow dropped it from the skies above and had it land in the middle of the street thankfully with no damage collateral damage or anything whatsoever but it just landed there a pokeball dropped grookey comes out it escapes nobody realizes it and uh, go now understands that this pokemon belongs to team rocket so now they have to try to find team rocket to give the pokemon back but team rocket themselves didn't realize that it was their pokemon and this is where my criticism lies why does grookey hate team rocket because if you think about it mm -hmm. grookey and team rocket when they were together they didn't do nothing bad like team rocket didn't do nothing bad to uh, grookey if you think about it if you it know like Team Rocket at all, you know that, ironically, they treat their Pokemon really well, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, mm -hmm. they're considered, like, some of the kinder people with that sort of stuff. So, it's like, why why is Grookey having a distaste towards uh, Team Rocket? Uh, they seem to be fine. It, but it's like, Grookey's just trying to look for its lost stick in the grand scheme of things. But it, it just makes me kind of mad because it's like, Grook like, Team Rocket's trying to understand what's happening to Grookey. It, it, they're not treating it like shit. They're just following after it. Until, of course, when Gro Go and Grookey reunited again because the stick of friendship was what guided them together, <sighs> I think. And yeah, so apparently the Pokemons, they, they are capable of breaking their own Pokeballs as we saw here, which begs the question why some of them just don't, in, you know, well, you get the idea. Some of them just don't break their own Pokeballs, but Grookey did. Uh, he broke the Pokeball. He's free now. Go, Which, you know, not thinking about it, it would be hilarious if Team Rocket still successfully catches the Grookey and Grookey just comes out and he just still smacks that Pokeball anyway and just cracks it open and then goes back to Grookey. I mean, goes back to Go and whatnot. Like, it, it makes me kind of question just, like, how far Pokemon would go to not be with a trainer that they would just break that Pokeball, you know? Mm. Um, that, that makes me sad for Jesse because she she smashed uh, Dustox's Pokeball. And then Go did that same thing right in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, journeys will never. Yeah, but um, like, uh, so yeah, Grookey went to Go. Everyone's happy. I think Team Rocket got blasted off. They had a very pointless plot twist that I feel ultimately didn't really bring anything of value to the series. I'm so mad with that because I feel yeah. like there was so much that it could have been given to us from that concept. But because we're still in that mindset of like, I, oh, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to have everything happen in this episode. It didn't pay off in the end. So, yeah, go got the Grookey. Everyone's happy. Specifically, I think I'm happy about the capture because I've always been talking about this almost every week ever since the Sobble capture. How I've been wanting to see Ash not get a single Galar starter. And everybody kept calling me a fool for thinking that. Well, who's the fool now, buddy? <laughs> so yeah, in case you got what you wanted, but yeah. Now so you, basically, I've but won now you got a piss leak. <laughs> but yeah, I was say, but now you got a piss poor handled Cinderace, a Sobble that's in a fucking pantry, and a Grookey that that gained a bond for one episode. Like you got what you wanted, but at what cost? You got it for an incompetent trainer who barely uses his Pokemon only when Darmanitan tells him it's time to fucking use them. Mm -hmm. Well, better him than Ooh. Ash because clearly Ash doesn't know what the hell other Pokemon are Ooh. in this series as well. So, in fact, actually, I don't even know. I don't even know. Does it belong? You know, in fact, Team Rocket could have been a better trainer with th their Pokemon because at least their Pokemon are showing up. Uh, well, whatever the Pokemon is. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> overall, very mediocre episode. I'm I'm so disappointed with this. I feel bad for the Galar starters. I may hate them 
But I still feel bad for them because I think all the Galar starters got horrible treatment in this episode. And not just in this episode, but I mean in their respective episodes. Sobble's episode didn't really feel appropriate given the fact that Go caught it so relatively early. So we already knew it belonged to Go. So the suspense wasn't going to be there when you get towards the end of the episode with Sobble, given that we all know it was going to go back to Go anyway. Uh, Score Bunny, I feel bad for it because it evolved so quickly into a Cinderace, which now that Cinderace is pretty much kept in its wall and not sticking outside, which, by the way, the previous series, you know, Pokemon Sun and Moon kind of already fixed that issue in their series, but yet we're going back to that situation now in Journeys. I'm so disappointed by that. And then, of course, the Team Rocket plot twist. I'm just mad that that just went the way it did. So, yeah, that's my take, man. I got nothing much more to say. Anybody else want to say something? I guess I'll pass this to you, Tyron. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll go. (laughs) Okay, so... I kind of picked up on the fact that Groki was going to be on Go's team because I see what they're doing. They want Go to have all three of the Galar starters. It's very clear they're going this direction because they want... They want to show him off and Go's the new kid in town and they really want to put Go in a main character position even though he's not qualified for it at all. Um, and everyone's going to call me a Go hater. Uh, yeah, I don't care about that. Uh, he's poorly written, so I'm sorry. I'm, poorly, like, I'm sorry for not liking a poorly written character. Um, anyway, with, with this, you... This is another situation. This is the Sweet Home situation all of, over fucking again. When you have gold in your hand and you drop it. I complained in the Sweet Coon episode where it's like, oh, I love the idea that he caught a legendary, but it's so strong that it's not going to obey him or open up to him. So he's got to earn it. Oh, he earned it. Fuck it. Oh, shit. This belongs to Team Rocket. He's got to deal with the conflict. Oh, shit. He solved it. Give me fucking conflict journeys. I swear. Like, this is an excellent concept. It belongs to Team Rocket. Team Rocket are bad guys. What about the other Pokemon that Team Rocket has in the Gotcha Machine Pokeballs? Wailord didn't have a problem in the Dragonite episode just sort of being free. But this, mm-hmm. this is where we have our conflict. And I guess Gash and Go don't give a fuck about the rest of the Pokemon. We could have a, we could have had a Gotcha Machine arc where Ash and Go go through the effort to free the Pokemon that are in the Gotcha uh, Machine balls. And then once that's over and they're successful then Team Rocket would have to find a way to, like, deal with no gotcha machine. Oh, wait, they got Chudo and Morpeko. They can actually work with something now. And they slowly build a team from that. That way we get rid of the machine and free the other Pokemon that are caught, and we get a mini Team Rocket arc, which we've done before. Best Wishes did it. I'm praising Best best Wishes, first of all. (laughs) Second. Yeah, I know. I felt like the earth was just shattered for a moment. Hold on. <laughs> like, I felt the earth just shook for a second. They're like, holy shit. <laughs> but go second, on, Tara. So, second, it's like Team Rocket. I can't, I can't be upset with Team Rocket in this episode. They didn't do anything wrong. They are literally the subjects of bad fucking placement. They're mm. here and they just happen to be the beat stick. No pun intended. For, for for the conflict that Go was having. And the entire conflict of this episode is that Grookey belongs to Team Rocket. And when it's time to fight Team Rocket, Ash and the others realize, oh, Grookey belongs to Team Rocket. Let's just leave. That's it. The battle fucking ends by them just leaving. And all of this, what is the what is the resolution to this entire mental conflict? Go whining, but I want Grokey really bad. This is what we waited 58 fucking episodes for? This is Grokey's appearance? Grokey's had a huge separation from the rest of the starters. Now, I know, obviously, this show has a like a habit of straying away from tradition. But all, generally, all the starters are brought up around the same time. Even if they all don't belong to Ash. If they don't belong to Ash, then May will have Torchic, and later uh, Ash gets uh, Trico, and then even later Brock gets uh, Mudkip. And then in Diamond and Pearl, 
Ash had two starters, Turd Twig and Chimchar, while Don rocked Pipla. And Chimchar was the antithesis for a little while because he belonged to Paul, only to transfer over to Ash. So that's why we got that. Best wishes, they went back to the Gen 1 thing, so Ash wound up catching all three at gate. And then in XY, they went back to the AG thing, so Ash had Froki, Clement had Chespin, and Serena had um, almost called it Foco. It's um, Finnegan. So I get, I get that pattern in Sun and Moon. You did that. You, we everybody had Pokemon in that one. So I think Ash had what he had Litten and Torcat and Rowlet, right? Yeah, he had Torcat and Rowlet, and I think yeah. Lana had Pop Pop. Oh. I think that's one of the reasons why Lana had more spotlight than most of the other Kahuna's, with the exception of Kiawe. Um, so yeah, that's what we did for that. Here, they're all going to go, and that's fine. I've come to accept it, but at the exact same time, all of these captures are very unjustifiable. They all come in the vein, in the in the senses of I really want this Pokemon right now, and I gotta get it because I gotta complete my fucking collection. And if I don't get it, I'm gonna whine about it. Even when Ash says, "Oh, there's nothing we can really do about it," but because I'm supposed to be the new main character. I'm, I'm supposed to get it. I, I hung out with him. I already spent some time with Grookey. So obviously I should get it. And never mind the fact that Diamond and Pearl had Ash spend multiple episodes fighting Chimchar on Paul's team, then warming up to Chimchar during the tag team tournament, only to gradually transfer over to Ash's team. Oh my God, I just complimented Diamond and Pearl too. Oh my God. <laughs> Continue. But the point being, the point being <laughs> that this is the most abysmal treatment of a fucking starter capture I have seen. And it's following a legendary uh, capture. Like, I'm not sure how the hell this, this passed. Like, they were like, yeah, that's fine. Because you can't even make the argument, oh, well, in this series, they're not doing arcs. It's a go two episodes to catch Score Bunny. He didn't even catch Score Bunny during its debut. He caught it the episode after. So what's the difference here? Why couldn't they have done that here? I did like the Mr. Mime Ultra Instinct scene, though. That was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is my take on this episode. I originally gave it a five. I want to say a five out of ten when we watched it. Ah, now it's received a three to a two. Hmm. After subs and I like, guess everything. Because because I keep looking back at this and I brought up Team Rocket and I thought to myself, wait a minute, it's kind of unfair to put Team Rocket into this uh, like because you're basing it off Team Rocket and other series. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, the fucking Ditto episode exists in Journeys. Team Rocket did a better job taking care of Ditto. Hmm. They had more of a bond with Ditto. And this is supposed to be our protagonist, Go? He's supposed to be the one that we're rooting for to take Grookey from the vicious, tough fucking Team Rocket? The very same Team Rocket that expired a ditto to transform correctly? Mm. Oh, yeah, he's the real bad guy. Yeah, fuck him, right? Fuck Team Rocket. This is one of the times where I actually feel bad for Team Rocket. Like, mm. really bad. And then, oh, and Ash used Farfetch in this episode, but it was it was like a cut the net thing. So they do realize they can cut through like nets and shit. So that's good. I'm just saying, this this is not. It was not worth keeping the starter separate for this long. It was not worth it. We see Sobbles in a fucking cabinet. This is who you want your fucking Grookey to go to. Team Rocket's able to take care of a whole more Peko that has a hissy fit when it's hungry and teach a ditto how to transform correctly and inspire Choodle. But you want go you want Grookey to go to the fucking trainer who can't even remember to fucking keep track of his goddamn Sobble and an electric outlet and a goddamn cabinet? This is who you want him to go to? So they can, what, have one episode where Darmanitan pisses him off so he can learn, like, what, branch poke and then we'll never see him again? This is the trainer that you wanted to go to. I'm sorry. This is fucking unacceptable. Next. <laughs> Am I last? Yes. Okay, wait, wait. Nesta didn't go yet. Nesta, go. 
Oh, then, me? Then, and then they're gonna hear me. <laughs> I don't. Like I, I honestly don't have much to say, but I think a lot of the stuff you guys were saying, though, I, I, when I saw this episode at first, I was, I was like, wow. So it could be they just gave gro- uh, Grokies um to go. That's basically how I just viewed this episode. Because it was like it was so convenient. Because I was like, it's it's like a Grokey found go. So, and then at the same time, I was like, why did Grokey go to go? So, but any anyways, though, I kind of I to me with the whole Team Rocket thing, though, how like they didn't do anything to Gro to Grokey. Like he was fine, but I I couldn't quite under I couldn't really quite grasp the concept of. I was like, so why does they hate Team Rocket so much? Like, they could have, like, easily um, done where, like, oh, so how did they train their, I guess their, I guess the the gotcha Pokemon, like, um, like how they treat them over there at the headquarters. Like, they could have, like, easily tried to, like, track it to, like, like they could have tried to, like, use, they could have used the gotcha machine and, and then try to track Pelikar and then go all the way to maybe to Team Rocket's headquarters and they could have found, like... And then they could have like seen what they done or something like that, like infiltrate the, like from Grokey there. Like it would have probably made more sense though to show if like what, if they were scared of something. But he didn't quite seem that way. But I, I don't know. So I'm just rambling. But it was just it was just more questions than than what made sense to me. And then the whole bonding, I, I, I was like, I found that they had their cute moments, but. I didn't think um, just um, I didn't really think though like like they will just bond that damn fast. I kind of I kind of found it cheap, <laughs> like really cheap to be honest. So, but yeah, I, I could I I honestly think they could have done more to it, but then it was just like I felt I kind of felt like um like this whole entire um with Team Rocket and everything, and they're just dumbing down for us to say, oh, Team Rocket's the bad guy, so they're automatically bad, and then Ash and Gold are the good guy. They're good, so because the group of keys with Team Rocket, they're bad. They, they um, they're con- it's considered good now because it, like it's stole from Team Rocket, which <laughs> kind of goes another can of worms. So, uh, it's um, does I don't have much to say about it. it was just mostly like more like opening uh, more can of worms. And then the biggest thing that got me afterwards when I was like, oh, so Pokemon could break their own Pokeballs. That was the biggest thing for me. So, oh, so you could break your, you could break the Pokeball. So then that means like that means other Pokemon can too. So like if they break uh, free another Pokeball, that means they're free from what they're implying on here. So it was, it's, it, it was just yeah. And so it's, it's funny how like that that was so easy to do. And then it seems like it's kind of funny how most Pokemon never done that before in the past, like break their own Pokeball to be free. So. Yeah, other other than that though, like I don't have much to say. You guys pretty basically hit everything I raised. So okay, I well, uh, I guess the best way to say it is that like, what what would you give it at a rating, like for a one to a ten? Um, for me, like a three out of ten. Oh wow. Okay, so the Polly actually, did we ever get a rating from you, Polly? I've actually never rated an episode on the pod before. It's true, she hasn't. Well, I mean, I guess this yeah. has become sort of recent, so we've mm-hmm. only just started doing this recently. But ha- have you had a number in mind for this episode? Yeah, I'd say it was about like a four or five. Because I, there's episodes I like less than this one, a.k.a. the Marshtomp one. But um, I'll give it a four, though, because I just, I, I just disappointed. Okay. I, wait, there's one thing I did like that I forgot to mention. I like the part where they went to go to the Pokemart, because we haven't really seen anything like that before. Yeah, Aside they showed off few... the Pokeballs, and probably we showed off the place where Go buys all his Pokeballs from. Yeah. So I thought that was and, cool. and, also, and also Yuji Ueda, because because hearing his one mm-hmm. of his voices is like freaking rip, gift wrapping a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, four for me. All right, then. So, uh, TSS, I'm going to pass this one on to you then, buddy, because I know you said you want to save your thoughts for the end. So, yes. So, so take it away, divided. buddy. So, so this is going to be divided into two parts. Um, number one is going to be what my thoughts of the episode are. And number two, um, my in-depth and unbiased analysis on why the fuck we're here in terms of where we are with the anime. Um, number one. I actually enjoyed this episode, along with some other people like Sato Sarah. I actually give it an 8.8. 8. reason why I give him this is because mm. of it. 
It's because number one, I have to look at it from, I always clean the slate for every episode and I judge it based off of entertainment factor. First of all, the, um, the way that I, the, the, the structure of it, first of all, the nice, the nice thing that we had with the freaking dream sequence. Yeah. People call it, um, pointless, but have you ever had any dream where you do things that are really stupid and then all of a sudden you wake up and you, you get to that. Also, to, to be honest, the, uh, that, that specific scene with the parents and everything, um, that's not going to stir any controversy any, anytime soon, realistically. Um, I did like, I did like uh, Barriard, uh, Mr. Mime coming in and actually doing all that stuff. Um, the progression throughout the episode where they go through each, each other individual's houses that was pretty cool. I did like the fact that we already got um, Grookey's kind of um, personality really fleshed out very well. Also, if you look closely at the Japanese closed captions, it says Ruki, like in Grookey. It does not say any like Satonori, which is its real name, which is the Japanese. Uh, yeah, that, that was something that threw me off because I'm like, why is this one getting the one it? exception to that? Yeah, that's yeah. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna actually use that in the West, but we'll see what happens. Now, I only ask um, before I continue. Just, just want to say before I forget, if they're yeah. if they're doing this for Grookey with the Rookie part, please yeah. let Come On keep his Come On after he because yeah, if you're gonna go the extra mile to do this for Grookey, well, you can do it. For I mean, that. I, I mean, I mean. Here's the thing. No, because remember, remember, um, remember, Neki ga Naito is 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 um is his uh, Japanese name. No, so but I'm say, yeah, like I'm night, just saying that I would still night. like for them to probably, break probably like night or something like that. Um, no, it's actually Ruki. It's actually Ruki. If you look at the, if you, I have, I have a screenshot that shows in the closed captions it says Ruki, R U K I, Ruki. Now, um, for the now, um, I did like the fact that they showed, showed that, that they, they, they they showed when they were in the mart and they showed the security camera footage. Um, now, um, I would actually say the rockets here. They are. They actually. The the their two appearances in this episode actually made better sense than the freaking um, Intellion episode where they were. They where they had jack shit to do, whatever whatever it was to actually have them actively trying to get it back. That was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it from face value. Now, like I said, that that you know, regardless of what you think, you know, hey, it's it's your opinion. You're all fine and that dandy, but. There is an 800-pound gorilla in this room, and I have to say it because we've had we've had KG go on for like minutes and minutes on previous podcasts about the series. We've had Tyrone do that. Now it's time for me because I have to thank Nessa for this because over the weekend we were talking about um, the episode, and she mentioned about the age demographic, and then I sat down for a few hours and I thought about this. So... Here we go. So this is my analysis on why the Pokemon anime has changed for the worst in the last 10 years. And I have it divided into six points. Point number one, the change of direction after Diamond and Pearl due to the soft reboot for black and white for best wishes. Now, as you know, as you know, we had a, we had a complete, we had a soft reset back um, when BW first began to kind of coincide with the black and white games. Um, this is where you start to see a slight change of direction in terms of the demographic, because the, one of the, of course, one of the major reasoning is behind, you know, because, uh, the rockets changing, but there wasn't really that much of a difference, um, on face value. But when you get later on in the series, that's when it really takes shape. Um, now this point was pretty short because the other ones are, have more meat to it. Point number two is the influx of interest in the XY era due to the shift of the older to the audience to an older demographic. Um, because as you, as Tyrone has mentioned many times on this podcast, um, introducing the shonen elements and that and and not to mention that most of, most people's fur that that are complaining about it now or at least having a great opinion about it, they're either they either came in during the XY era or came back to the series during the XY era. So they were, they were pretty much shelved and uh, pushed into these uh, the shonen elements, and that's why that's why a lot of people like it. Okay, so that's so that's the, the so that's the whole thing. However, though, during that era, there was another show that was going on 
that unfortunately was taking the demographic that um, Pokemon held for a very long time. And that was Yo-Kai Watch. Yo-Kai Watch debuted in January 2014. And they ended up grabbing a lot of the younger demographic, which is under the age of 10. Now, during 2014 and 2015, when Yo-Kai Watch was in its heyday, when its peak, they sold 4 mil the, between Yo-Kai Watch 1 and 2, they sold about 7 million games. At that time, the anime was also very popular with long, younger people. And I think the investors, which include JR Kikoku, which is Japan Rail, uh, ShowPro, and TV Tokyo Corporation, because Tokyo Watch is also a TV Tokyo production as well, they looked at it and said, okay, we're losing that demographic. So what do we have to do? They had to change it. So what happened was, as I mentioned on Zach's video many times before on this channel, Sun and Moon changed to the comedy-related formula that, that, we, that we know very well to try to appeal to the younger demographic. Now, if, now, as I mentioned in the video, we have the whole thing about the pose dance sequence, like in Yokai Exercise number one, where you have the dancing, and also a lot more music where you have more kids involved. But also, if you look very closely... You have more sequences where when characters are talking, when main characters are talking, you have Pokemon like Pikachu and other ones like fucking around in the background. You know, they're, they're messing around in the background. The reason why they do that is to keep attention spans for younger kids. There's a, fact, there's a factoid for you. So, while the storytelling didn't really bottom out yet, you started you you really started to see, see the shift at this point now this trend kind of gotten wor uh, has gotten worse in the la and especially in this series but later sun and moon now it took sun and moon as we know about a year and a half to change the tra trajectory that they were going with the whole forced comedy thing okay so that's why it changed for the better so here we go with 2019, point number five. Now we have an episodic format where you have watered down plot lines and elements which would please younger children, but would completely alienate the older audience looking for compelling storytelling. Mm -hmm. So this series has devolved to a level that's reminiscent of other TV Tokyo children anime shows that air on Saturday mornings, such as Pochito Hatsume Pikachu in Kit, or any of the Tomika series that came out, such as Drivehead or the current Earth Grinder, which sole purpose is to promote toys or other project uh, products. So essentially, it's like their their anime is like their plot lines are simple to understand, but they lack the depth that older demographics would have interest in. So what essentially has happened is you had a lot of, because now that the series has pigeonholed itself to try to get the younger audience, they're alienating, alienating the older audience. And the way that they're doing that is they're dumbing down the plots. Mm -hmm. So they're making it very simplified mm -hmm. in comparison. I only, my right. only, my only counter to that, and it's not a big counter because you do bring up a point with the demographic, but here's my, my counter to that. Then why is it that, and I, I, I rarely talk about OG. It's not that I don't like OG or not that I'm thinking OG is like the best. Right. Uh, OG has its flaws and its, pro, its pros and its cons. Right. But I feel like OG did a better job telling a compelling story. That's why I'm saying. That's, that's, well, that's, that's what. And that's I was a I'm, kid when I watched OG. Right, but what I'm saying, but what what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is this this paradigm shift. It took very. It was between DP and now. That's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about previous. Previous is a completely different bag of worms. Like they had the formula that they had was was appealing to everybody. Pokemon has always been a series for everybody. Right. But what has happened is changing demographics as the years have gone by has gotten us to this point. To this point. However, though, that's not the last point. I do want to just, it, well, I, I'll let you finish first because I do want to bring yeah. up a counterpoint to that statement you just made, yeah. TSS, because there is something that really is throwing me off about that because it's yeah. like I do agree to an extent, but if they wanted to try to cater to the younger demographic, if that's been their entire intention to do so, 
why are they shoehorning in all these references to the past generations? Mm. Why are they trying to shoehorn series, into like all this these? This whole other... series' appeal is that it's supposed to be going back to older region, right? But, but you have to look at mm -hmm. it. But I'm looking at it from a I'm looking at it from a formulatic standpoint from going based off of what we previously have and the knowledge that I have. But there is one more point that I want to make before we get into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Number yeah. six is. Num and the last point is, um, in my opinion, the investors and the staff of the series are rarely playing safe to push this agenda, considering that Go is supposed to be based off of Pokemon Go and all that stuff. They're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to shoehorn the stuff. But, uh, but, the, but the point is this: since the series is run for a younger demographic, they don't care about how the story is executed as long as the sales for the products are doing well. They won't make any drastic changes. You know, um, about 14, 15 years ago when we did the parody subs, uh, we used to joke about, you know, Pokemon Ghetto Desire is buy our toys. Well, the problem is the anime now has devolved into a point where that is actually coming a reality because they're actually trying to push the product without trying to put in much in the way of dramatic storytelling like there has been in the past. Now, the thing is, unless if there's a massively drastic change, I don't see, uh, like, like a massively dram dramatic change in either um, executives not being happy or they're trying something different to try to boost sales, I don't think there's going to be any change. But as for the case for Sun and Moon, we might be uh, close to that point, but it might not be until either the end of this year or next year. Now, that, now, the other thing is, I I'm, I'm, might be enjoying the series more than everybody else because of the amount of t TV shows, Japanese TV shows and anime that I've watched over the last 10 years. And kind of like this whole thing of kids' shows being what they are, I'm kind of desensitized to that now. So I could kind of look, I could, I kind of like, don't, I'm not, I'm not phased about overanalyzing because I know what it's focused on. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, now, like I said, unfortunately, that's the way that's the way I think about it. Um, but if you look at it, if you look at it line by line, progressive by progression, um, the realistic way is the series has not been the same since Diamond and Pearl, and I, in my opinion, it has been on a slow and steady decline. We have an anime which is pretty much tired out. But the problem is they're trying they're trying to do different things and sometimes you know the shit sticks to the wall and sometimes it doesn't and in this case it's not and it's becoming like really cookie cutter children's TV Tokyo anime which I not I'm not really you know I'm not I'm not, just, not not really invested in unfortunately it's just so sad because it's like you have like all of uh, like a lot of people in the fandom they're like they're doing rewrites and stuff and. And like even Terrell in his review made a better compelling episode. Yes. In this episode alone. And I know yes. several times I've made uh, better ideas. It's like um, yes. I yeah. honestly, I, I honestly think because I think also I mentioned this to TS is like I honestly think the writers on purpose like they're trying to they want to weed off all the older fans. Like I honestly think so because it's like because it's like all that watering down. Because I think and, for us, obviously because we're all older and everything, we kind of like being more concept. We want more things like kind of like, right. So we're, we we think like that. So yes. I, I that's what I honestly think. I'm like I'm like I wonder if they're doing this on purpose. It's just because that's why I kind of was like I could. I was like, because people are like on fire, um, like complaining so much and so much and so much, but it seems like there's not much change yes. going on. And the sad part is the Anipoke PR, PR Twitter <laughs> is actually trading the series with better respect than the actual series itself. Because if you look at, if you look at the Anipoke Twitter, um, they actually made a reference to White Day. And it's like, well, that's a little bit, that's a, that's, that's a demographic that, you know, is a lot it can reach a lot more people than the current demographic of the show. And I'm thinking to myself, wow. It's like, wow, there is a real disconnect between the PR and the actual show itself. Yeah, and it's like two what, different things making, going on. <laughs> yes, exactly. And that's and that's the thing. It's like, you know, even even though I give Sun and Moon shit, you know, and then, and then now, and now this is that now this is now again now now the unbiased shit is done. Now I'm getting into my stuff. Um, Sun and Moon, I give it shit a lot, but what I do give it now is 
at least they ha they still had the ability to tell a compelling story. Because the video games helped out. Considering that the show now has pretty much... N it's not following a, sim a single game's storyline or plot mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. They're kind of misguided. Mm -hmm. And now they don't know what the fuck they're doing. I mean... But and some of them yeah, care they about the characters, too. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's the thing, you know, I, I will, I will say this and Ken, and Ken Lazard has a great point. PM, the manga is better. Yes, of course. Yes, I absolutely agree. Because the manga that's out, Satoshi and Go's Adventure, tells the same plot lines that are in here now, but without all the bullshit. Yeah, so all it the actually fillers is a better there. read. Even though, even the way they handle certain elements that a lot of people hate in the anime, they actually f resolve it in the manga. <laughs> like the Suicune yes. capture, for example. While it's still very, you know, controversial as a capture, I do believe they handle the Suicune thing better is in the a, manga. Is it a two? Is it more than a one-parter? No, it's still. I, I, actually, I don't it. know. I haven't read the thing. I only just. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. Well, I'm not up to the. I'm not up to the chapter that yet, though, either. Because the. I think. I think the second one ends at Zamazenta. I think it ends at the Sun and Moon arc. I'm sorry. The. Uh, the. Um, sorry. The uh, Galar arc. I believe. Yeah, Shield. But here's the thing. But here. Yeah. But but the thing is though. Also with the manga, the manga is actually in a completely different order than in an anime. Like for example, the um, the reboot thing. Is actually done before the um, the B fight. Sorry, not the B fight. I'm sorry. Um, what the hell is it? Let me just let me just bring up the the uh, the context. Hold on. Yeah. yeah of it's course. actually done. No, no, no. It's it's actually no. It's actually done. It's actually done before Riolu. Riolu is done after the reboot thing. Huh. Hmm. And also and also the um, also the Biscus fight is before. As after the Riolu fight, the after the Riolu oh. hatching. So, like I said, they're going in. They're going in a completely different order. And also, no oh. filler. <laughs> that, that's the yes, best part. No that's, filler. That's the best part. Does he use his minds more? Because there's no it's, filler, it's that the means same, they just go straight to the plot-heavy episodes just, that have they, the minds. So yes, to, they, yeah. But but the thing is though, it it still it still has the same concepts as the anime. But there's a lot less filler, so it's actually more enjoyable to read, and there's less, there's 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 more action content and more story content than freaking filler content, and actually the the handle some things differently. And it sounds like a big old band aid after the fact, but I mean it is because well basically it is because it's like that's yeah. uh, and so I, not I a complete manga. Yeah, not complete, my copy. yeah, not yeah. not a complete fix, but like a, a slight remedy. Even like I even like I mentioned before, like they did references to past generations mm -hmm. better in the manga because they showed yes. X and Y Ash, they showed Sun and Moon Ash, they showed yes. uh, you know they showed their Pokemon from those series too, as references um, to Ash's past adventures in the manga. Whereas in the series, it was just the, the look at the trophy itself, you know. Also, like, in the manga, is it geared a little bit older on the demographic or not as much? Yeah. I mean, so, it's about the same. It's about the same, but they have more. But they have I'm sure more it's an older game. demographic. How many kids are sitting down and just reading a fucking manga? Well, Who yeah, but maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying kids don't read manga. I'm saying, like, a kid's not going to take the... He's not going to take as much time as a teenager is going to sit down and read a manga. It's like mm -hmm. Call of Duty, targeted for adults, get for kids. But after kids play it, yeah. kids play it, yeah. So yeah, mm -hmm. okay. But um, TSS, was there anything else you wanted to add before we start getting into that debate from uh, your statements that you've been bringing up here? Go ahead. Oh, uh, you're you're good. Okay. Um, yeah. I agree a hundred percent, honestly, with some of the things you've said because I do believe that, and and everybody should already acknowledge this. Time change. When, when time goes by, the way things are handled in life also change drastically as well. Um, at the same time, though, I still believe that shows that are mainly targeted towards the children demographic 
they at least know that they are not only just trying to get them too, they're trying to also get the older demographic. I, I feel like children cartoons, especially nowadays, you know, even in the Western side of things, like a lot of children cartoons that were meant for just children are also appealing to the adult side of things because they oh, have yeah, things that the adults would have and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's, that's and why and a lot of people enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's always about the storytelling. It's about the writing. It's never like a children's show will always be viewed as a children's show, but that doesn't mean it can't have adult aspects right. into right. it. Right. You know, yes. even of like course. a children anime, like uh, you know, that we have going on currently, uh, they can also tackle topics. That it's like be every time you say, "Oh, but the dim, the, that's meant for kids. That's meant for kids." Then you're spitting on Avatar: The Last Airbender's face because that show is beautiful. And it's Mitford, and it was for kids. Yeah, but I'm actually comparing. Yeah, but I was actually comparing it to things from the same, uh, the same production. Yeah, the same, know, the just, same studio I, itself. That's I know. Doing. I'm just saying that that, yeah. but that's a general statement that can be used for any level of genre. Mm -hmm. Saying yeah. it's for kids to me that means nothing. That that thing for kids, as I've seen in my past, can do better. Mm -hmm. I've seen better. And thus, yeah. I'm going to judge it better. I'm not going to judge it on what it was meant for. I'm going to judge it based on what was given to me that was yeah. used better. Mm -hmm. Saying it's for kids. No, no offense to what TSS is saying. He's absolutely right. But the statement in broad terms feels yeah. almost like a cop out. Oh, we're yeah. made for kids, so we don't have to try. What the fuck does that mean? Does that mean kids aren't allowed to watch good, uh, yeah. good media? Yeah. Are they not allowed? It's like, are they, they not allowed a compelling story? And it aggravates me because it's like there's so much that they could do with this show that they are yes. failing to see. Mm -hmm. And th it, that's, I think, the aggravating part about this series. I, I feel like a broken record every time we have to bring this up whenever we do. But it, it just mm. annoys me that they have so much that they could do on the table that they fail to even do anything. And it also, like, yeah. Pokemon... Um, Pokemon Journeys, they have, like, let's not deny the fact, when they have good episodes, they nail it. Like, they are mm -hmm. some of the of best. Course. Like, you could call it the best of, of the best episodes. Course. You know? So it's like, like, it's clearly there. They know it's there. They even made it. So why are they going the way that they're going, you know, with the storytelling? And, and that's what I don't like. It's like they're, they're having these episodic nature-esque episodes that I think could work had it been handled far better. But honestly, they haven't. I don't think they've, they've found it yet. But this is their first time doing this attempt, too. And I really do believe that this shouldn't have been the way the series had gone into you know i feel like journeys should have been a galar series at this point or it should have been something else because mm -hmm. given that the series has no and ts has brought this up before given that it's not based on anything yes. it can do whatever the hell it wants to but that also means there isn't a clear storyline that they can make mm -hmm. we initially thought when the series began that it would focus mainly like uh, on galar but still at least have ash and go travel across the regions and mm -hmm. do other things in the meantime yeah. as the Galar plot is thickening. However, in Journeys, what's happening? Well, majority of the episodes end up in Kanto. And everything else that's for, from Galar, we barely get a chance to see. And that happened. And we got to the big plot, which is supposed to be the main storyline. And we got that cleared out of the way. So it's like, what's Galar really meaning in the grand scheme of things now? If, if the story element is gone, that was supposed to be the big deal about it. And I mm. honestly can't say it's going to be the gym battles because they don't mean anything in there. Yeah. Because Ash is not getting badges yeah. to beat the league. So there's no nothing for that. Uh, so, you know, there, there's a world championship. But that's a global thing. That's not a Galar thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. I, I feel like Journeys had so much they could have done that they could have easily you know, played around with. And yet I, I feel like they didn't try hard enough or at all at that matter. I, I'm just so mad about that. I, I feel yeah, bad. I, if anything, yeah, I feel bad for Galar the most in this entire series, because I know if we ever go into the next generation, we're probably going to go back to that format. We're probably going to go back to visiting gen nine, mm -hmm. which also implies the generation eight got shafted 
badly yep. in this series. Mm-hmm. And, and yep. that sucks I, because I, Galar is the third best selling games with Sword and Shield and mm-hmm. right now. I do have a question. Hmm? Um, yeah. So what my question is though, um, I keep hearing like a lot more toy sales, like how you, I guess you mentioned earlier from your point, like like quite often, like um, to to reference, like I guess what our Pokemon might be coming up in the future. Or, like was that similar like that in Sun and Moon and in other series? Like, well, I mean, I mean, it's always I mean, been like I would that. Say, I'd say. It, it's been it's been like that. It's been like that, especially since uh, BW, because that's when they introduced like uh, that's when they really started pushing like Moncole. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I mean, like I said, I think I think the issue, the the other the other thing is that while you know while the the series had you know I wish the series did have a direction because at least it gives the writers a chance to create that compelling story that we need. But I think the biggest problem is we have executives and higher ups and also investors that are basically controlling and dictating what's going on here and if the thing still works then they don't want to break it they want to be safe it's like it's like investing in the stock market if you want to get a, you know you want to keep your money you know safe and not fluctuating up and down you say you invest into something safe so that's what they're doing they're taking the safe route because it makes sense financially to them especially during these times um, and I'm hoping that, like I said, hopefully either later this year or next year, they have a change of heart and we finally get a fucking change. But I do not, I mean, but the problem is you can't, you can't fix what's already out there. And, you know, it's like, it's like saying you, you can't, you could, you can only fix it while it's in the factory, not mm-hmm. when it's outside in the open and already done. So it won't, mm-hmm. it won't, it won't fix, it won't fix the series, you know, from being what it is, but I'm hoping that they at least turn the direction and at least make an effort in creating a more compelling story. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's once again, another issue of, we just got to wait and see, which is what journeys has been in as a whole. Yeah. Week. That's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. How oh well, and but then, do you, and then do you guys think possibly maybe is the pandemic, like they're probably just, they're playing more safe than ever. No, because Journeys was built no. before the pandemic. It, hit. Built- it, it, yeah. de- it definitely did put a halt in the production. You can easily mm-hmm. tell that. But, like, they already had their story written down. Yes. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't like... And also, I don't think it would have affected the Sword and Shield arc or anything. I still no. think they had the four-episode format already in hand. Uh-huh. It was supposed to release at an earlier time. But given how much time they had to, you know, delay... Uh, the Sword and Shield thing didn't happen until October, November. So, right. you know, that that's the situation in hand. But, yeah, like, I don't think the pandemic hit them as bad as, say, the BW incident with the earthquake where the entire structure yeah. of the story had to be changed. Changed, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, Ten years. That. Ten years. <laughs> don't worry. Keep waiting, buddy. <laughs> the anniversary. Just, just. Uh... Yes. Terrell, yeah. Journeys has a story. It's a story about a young boy and another young boy. This is a story all about how TPCI went straight on down. To the- <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I give you that. I'll give Perfect. you that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so the best way to just say it is uh, Journeys, it's a thing. I, I, I'm, I'm having a ride with it. And, feels like it's something i'm just waiting to see how things are going to uh to continue to unfold as we progress further but honestly man i just it it makes me sad because you you want to know what the big thing was what the other episodes that we've had have been really nailing it in the park for me Mm -hmm. i've i've been (laughs) loving the the ponytail episode despite that issue i've loved the far-fetched episode that's ha- that had an issue, but that was not a really big deal. The double episode, I know people were kind of mixed on it, but I still found it very favorable in the end. Um, you know, I've been really liking those episodes that I've been dropping recently. They they felt more good in terms of the story structure. And it's then we come back, and then we come to, to this me. one, and then it just goes like, <laughs> it goes back down. Now, now, with that being said, though, this week's episode, I swear to to god if they show me that ash is now in the ultra class and we're now in the oh, top no, 100 <laughs> 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 i'm giving no. up on 
Google. I've so. given up on the rankings of that dumbass yeah. tournament. Doesn't make sense. Ooh. The whole concept was <laughs> fucked the minute it was introduced. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was like, oh yeah, let's go from ten thousand all the way to. 3, you want to know what? You want to know what pisses me off the most about this series is like, and this goes back to what the others said. Yeah, this is supposed to be meant for a newer audience, but KG brought it up before I did. They keep dangling old shit, and it gets people running the fuck back. Oh, oh, oh! Iris and Gary are gonna show up. They have to keep saying that. It's like a bad fucking boyfriend or some shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's like I mentioned this once ago. It's like dangling the meat in front of the dog, but then it's taking like, it away. It's as soon like, as... oh! See, hi, see, hi, prob agree with me. I will high five. It's like, it's like, oh! Yay. Oh, but, 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 but Journeys treat you bad. Why are you still there? Well, I have to get stay with Journey. My jacket is in their car. Like, what the fuck? And sadly, and sadly enough, you don't hear anything from, from them yet, either. There's, like, nothing mentioned of them. It's just like, oh! It, if you keep referencing the good old days long enough, then everybody will come back. Literally every time they brought up something older in Journeys, it's been piss poor. None of it not has even, been handled right. But it's just, they're in the region that they can do that. And they won't. Because they have to cut corners because voice actors and mm. this and that and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Look, even the episode I like, the Bisky episode, where it's like, Lieutenant Surge fought you once. Is he here? No, no he's, uh, he's gone. But, but but he was there, remember? Ooh. But it's like, I think it's also the soft reboot. The soft reboot that... The soft, that soft messed, reboot. <laughs> that messed everything I mean, up. Because yeah. if, we, if this was OS through DP narrative, we'd be seeing Tracy and Professor Oak like every day. You know, or at least just having them in the background, like as like you yeah. know, like they're communicating, like he's talking with them in the phone or something, right. or Ash in the Jack updated Kirk cell phone. Back, like. And then, and then you got the fucking Karina shit where Mega Lucario lost a grab lock, but Riolu fucking beat it. And also, um, that's where Ash got into the super class, which didn't mean anything special mm -hmm. because he got his ass handed to him and went straight back to the bottom again. And then, and then Chuck had to climb back up again and on then, screen. And then <laughs> Chuck was just there. Chuck was just there. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't add to anything. He just fucking exists. He has a cute poly It was like, oh, I was there. Also, it's not even Who the same VA, which to be fair, would be very, very difficult to be honest. It's like, <laughs> hi, I was there. Who wants cake? Okay, moving on. That was fucking stupid. It's just like, like literally, and then they use this as their element to draw people in. Yeah, it's, it's their safe way of like to make. To and make they can't even get the new characters right. Fucking also, uh, Opal just exist. Also, to to chat, I do have a request. I did put a poll just now, and I would love for you guys to respond to that poll. We have a yay or a nay option there. For your opinion on what you would think on the episode overall. So if you can answer it before it reaches to the zero, that'd be great. So we can get an overall score from the community and, here. And, uh, and so Radiance was Radiance brought it up already. I don't let this distract you from the fact that go beat a fucking Zapdos. <laughs> a lot of people it's like a lot of people come to the point and I, and I know I'm in the I'm already probably in this cesspool of of, of people who are gonna burn at the stake for not liking Go. I don't like Go because he's poorly written. That's why I don't like Go. But a lot of people, if you, I, we've come to a, a moment in time where we, are, I, I like to call it the defense force. Because the same thing happened to Poplio way back when Sun and Moon started. When everybody loved Rowlet, people were okay about Litton because it's a cute cat. And pretty much everybody threw Poplio away. So it got to a point where people made a Poplio defense force or some shit. Uh, Go is so bad of a character that they made a defense force for him. So it's like, oh, you're a go hater, go haters, go haters. Like, it's got nothing to do with the fact that I just hate him out of pure frustration. I don't like him because I don't like the way he's written. I have an actual critique. I don't hate him just because he's on screen and he makes me mad like a bull looking at a fucking red towel. I don't like the way they handle him. And this is the character that's supposed to represent all three of the Galar starters. This is the character that's supposed to be the, the second coming after Ash's, like, stuff. Because it's very obvious they're trying to push Ash back. 
He's and become the side character right. now. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they can't even do it right because, first of all, Ash's goal was far more interesting than Go's. Second, even if it wasn't the case, because there are people who want to capture Pokemon that actually have interesting goals, Chris from the anime. Um, <laughs> Even if you take all of that into account, Every time he gets some development, it's always in, set up in this artificial format that's just like, yeah, we have to do this because we need Go to be better. Oh, Ash, yeah, we know he's stronger than Go, but we got we to gotta throw him in a hole for 24 minutes. So, <laughs> it, you it, know it, what, you, oh, I was like, you know what's a missed opportunity for Go? Like, they could have introduced all these different Pokeballs. Like, They're not going to do that. That requires them to draw. That requires them to fucking draw, Nessa. <laughs> <laughs> and Polly brought this up originally where she wondered why Starmie wasn't used more than Star You one night when we were talking. I was like, that requires them to fucking draw. <laughs> but Tyrone, we literally came a from a series a prior to you know why, that did you know why, do it, Tyrone. You want to know why Suicune isn't introduced? Because that requires them to fucking draw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 69 Lamal people, thank you. Yes, you, we love Lamel. every single one of you Lamel folks out there. <laughs> Make you, sure you, you clean up us, afterwards. You give us love. Uh, Ty mm -hmm. came in and contributed some 10 bitty bits. And uh, overall, 90% of you had voted nay for if the episode was good. And 10% of you had voted yay. So, uh, yeah. TSS and I probably, I can't keep voting for multiple times, all right? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm I, kidding. I voted yeah, yes. <laughs> we know damn well you said nay. Nay. <laughs> I didn't vote at all. I forgot to vote myself. What the fuck? You're the one that said the poll. They all, voted, they, all, they, all voted, they all voted the Uma Musume. Listen, like, man, uh -huh. I'm just saying... Bring us that game to the West, and I swear I'll stop playing Dragalia at that point. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I'm, I'm saying this as a person who's been very critical, because I know I sound like the fucking Journey's grouch. But I do respect the reason TSS brought up. He, he took time to actually formulate this. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say, oh, well, well... Screw, screw all that research you did. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great. I appreciate. Yeah, that. my problem just goes overall with what I've been given, not yeah. the ending result of things that have been done in the background based on a couple of guys in suits going. Well, the report show that children fucking no. I'm basing it off of what I physically see on my computer screen every fucking Thursday or Friday or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, but that's and that's, I've that's, seen that's, better. Yeah, and that's what then that's and that's what makes us special because it's like the sad part is though, and KG yeah. brought it up. I've seen better from this show. Yep. Mm -hmm. But that's what that's what you get. That's what you get when you tune in every week. You I, get, you I get gave the Kakuna. I gave the Kakuna episode. I gave an episode a ten. It's granted it was a slice of life ten, which is way different than a regular ten. Mm -hmm. But I gave it a fucking ten. That mm -hmm. means y'all have. That means they have it. That means they have the ability to write a story. That means they have the ability to use these characters. And every fucking week, it feels like they just can't. Mm. Mm. They like they lost a spark. Uh, like no, I said, the, the train, the train, <laughs> the train, the train left the station mm -hmm. in freaking September 2010. That's what <laughs> oh, happened. Yeah. Shit, they the forgot train. to take it, and now they're just mm. waiting for the next train ride, which won't come back. Ooh, never. <laughs> so. Yeah, and that's and that and that's the thing. Like like I said, this is this is the reason why you should tune in every week. Like I said, I took I took my time, and like I said, and and having and a person who has watched every single episode of Yokai Watch, watched every single episode of Pokemon at this point, I was able to make a unbiased analysis, and there you go. You will not you will not see that kind of in de in depth analysis anywhere else. Yeah, so, and also, just, just to kind of clarify, in case you guys think we're always like this, no, <laughs> we're not. Well, like, literally, we've had. I don't want to feel like I've slowly poisoned the others. By the way, I just no, feel like no, this I, 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 I just seen better. Really? Oh, I'm I, doing a leader's board right now. Like Donnie, Donnie, there is the Densha to Go game that's coming out actually on Thursday. Wait, we I'm have a leader's board. I mean, no, I, I have a leader board for the. Uh, for for the journeys episode, and I'm also making one for my DP rewatch right now. 
Just what's just your personal it. faves then? <laughs> you're gonna get mad because oh, you're okay, then I'll stop you there because I already know what you're gonna bring up. <laughs> exactly. So then why did you ask? I already knew instantly the because moment we wanted you to said fucking that figure I it out. what it was. <laughs> Oh, you know what it is. Yeah, and I already I'm so know what it was, and I'm I'm already mad. Yep. <laughs> I All his favorite is the Riolu episode when it hatched because the poly worlds were chilling on the lily pads. No, not that <laughs> one. But also that one's probably up there too for wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how everybody views episodes differently depending on what's in it and what's not in it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Yeah, because people yeah, because people have expectations and like yeah. I said, it's because it's because the Pokemon series in the past has been so diversive. We didn't even get to talk about Farfetch's shoehorned maybe evolution. No, we talked about it. We talked oh, about the fact shit. that Ash is gonna have it evolve into a Cernite and then it's gonna beat the shit out of Gallade and that's gonna get him into Ultra Class. I I don't I don't like it. I feel mm. that that's poorly handled too. I feel like this whole Farfetch to Surfetch thing was like a oh by the way shit we forgot Farfetch exists. Here let's, let's, let's throw some episodes real fast. It's like these these yeah here. You mean one episode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No no no. no from got- from the setup from Rinto. Yeah, we got Rinto, then Wilkstrom, then this. Like, that's it. They literally had a... They, they set it up in three episodes and said, there, we we paid attention to Farfetch. Oh my God, I wouldn't be surprised. Same, wait a minute. This is what? the same structure as the B fight. They had, they yeah. had the B introduction, then they <laughs> had the Flygon episode, <laughs> and then they had the rematch. Uh-huh. I wouldn't be surprised if Surfetch doesn't see the light of day after it evolves. I would Fish not be time. surprised. I feel, <laughs> I feel like this whole thing was there. Checkbox. We did our far fetch thing. All right, moving on. Promote Let's show the an epi- duck. Let's show an episode where Shuckle was confused for like three hours or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, that sounds hilarious. I want that. <laughs> I just want a gallon Pokemon. I want ice cube. We were all oh, speaking <laughs> of which. We were so close to still getting that Galarian Ponyta, man. Polly, mm. Polly, I know what the episode. I, ice Cube's gonna be like Ice Cube stuck in some in a bunch of blocks of frozen ice around its head, and then they're like, "What do we do?" And goes like, "I don't know, Cinderace. What do we do?" And he looks confused, and then mm. the whole episode is that. It's just them trying to figure figure basic fucking science. You want to know what I want? <laughs> this might sound stupid. But I want them to play like that weird puzzle game where they have to try to fit the shape of the ice cube into a hole that matches its head. <laughs> like like, oh, those, like, like those children game. games where it's like the circle no, goes they... into the circle. Uh, or, no, it's, or the it's, triangle it's triangle goes into triangle. the circle. Or the <laughs> rectangle goes no, into the circle. The circle. The half circle oh, goes God. into the circle. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever seen that video yes, where it's like this one guy is like talking about, hey, look at all these different shapes. I got this circle right here. It obviously goes into the circle hole. Or oh, I got God. this square right here and it goes into the circle hole. And then I have this star <laughs> shape right here and it goes into the circle hole. And it's shit like that. Like that's what I want to see, see look happen at, with Look I at see. Sobble. Look at Sobble over here hiding because he knows he's going to be an off screen land soon, getting replaced by Grookey. You're like shit, I'm already missing. Don't miss the hole in the wall. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so th- this was an episode, I think. Uh also didn't wait, wasn't this also the same moment where uh where Gengar wanted to snap the neck out of Renji in this one? Yes. Mm-hmm. Which I think that's the highlight for me personally. Just, that, that, yeah. that was my highlight. At this point, I think Reiji deserves Gengar more than Ash does. I, I hate that the anime acknowledges that Ash is doing a piss poor job with it. Because it's like mm-hmm. you're, he's you doing know, the same you know issue, like what happened you know with. I kind of hope they do because like. Have y'all seen know. Dragonite recently? I, we lost them. Yeah. Mm, oh no! Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! I was gonna bring it up. I was like, you know what they could do with Gengar? Like, I'm not like obviously they're ignoring him, but like the one time they do bring him back, he should be pissed off at Ash, and then like. And then they have to do an arc to try to regain his trust. Yeah, but then we—that's the farfetch shit all over again. I was like, no, but it'd be something different, though. No, it won't. Like- it won't be different. It's the exact same thing they did with Riolu and Farfetch. In fact, that's why a lot of people call the Suicune episode the Sable episode 2.0. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because it's the same thing. It's but the same shit. If there's one thing I think all of us can agree on for certain, it's that Suicune still got his ass shafted in the side in this episode, man. I, I still feel bad for that Suicune. Every week, man. Every single week, ever since he's been caught, has got his ass handed to him by these goddamn poachers. 
You can never win this poor guy. But yeah, so overall, ladies and gents, I think with that said, we are now complete with our reaction review shenanigans for the night. What do you guys say? Go on. Yes. I'm just sad. Uh. <laughs> well, at least I have my brain and my imagination to make up headcanon. Um, I hate that we have to. Re it's like it's like that. Yeah. Was fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> exactly. That's that's been my whole life these past like eleven years. I've been. <laughs> I've been happy in something else, so it's not really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, real so. fast, um, Professor Silver just posted this, so you guys can actually watch it after this. And he's not reviewing one Pokemon this week. He's reviewing the entire Team Eevee that Virgil had. Mm -hmm. cool. so, yeah, so if you want to watch his review on all of the Eevee Lucians that Virgil had during the anime, Ew. go check that out. Yes. Now, before we wrap things up, TSS, you mentioned beforehand you wanted to take some time right now to talk about something at this moment before we wrapped up the stream for tonight. <laughs> That that uh, analysis was it. Oh, okay. So, uh, I, thought, yeah, yeah, I, thought, yeah. I thought you had something to say, like, at the very, 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 very end, like, after we no, were about to wrap things up. No. no, I, I said it was, I, I was going to be later on in the show. And, but uh, it was a good analysis. Yes, it was a fantastic uh -huh. analysis, I'm actually buddy. happy he expanded it. Oh, that, was, that, was a, that was a good talk on Saturday. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Somebody told me to post the Grookey image. All right. Let, let, me, let me post that image real quick. Hold on, because I think this is... This is a good image, personally, uh, that I feel everybody should at least see once in their life anyway. So uh, to everyone out there who doubted me, hold this L stick for you real quick, man. Just saying. Just hold on to that stick. You deserve it. All right? Thank you. Now, with that being said, next week or later this week is going to be the last week uh, for the Pokemon anime for March anyway. Uh, that's going to be focusing hey. on the Farfetch and the Galarian Farfetch. Well, the Galarian Farfetch and the Glade. Uh, we'll see. We're, we're not certain just yet. But um, how things are going to shape up in that episode. Looking forward to it regardless. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see how things will turn out for the following weeks when we don't have episodes to go and review and discuss. I have an idea personally uh, is in terms of what I intend to do. For that, so I'll keep you guys up to date next week in regards to it. However, I do want to remind folks here in this uh, stream for tonight that if you want tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on this channel, we will be doing the playthrough of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. And uh, we hope you guys will tune in for that. I also want to give this chance to let my buddy Tyrone and TSS take their chance to also promote some of the things that they're going to be doing for this week as well. So, Tyrone, normally we begin with you. What are you going to be doing for tomorrow? Because you normally do something. Uh, for tabletop, I think we're just going to go ahead and do dual links again. Aren't you buying a uh, tabletop simulator? Yeah, but we're, we're I got to get money first, so that'll take a bit. Um, hmm. But for this week, we're doing uh, we're just going to do dual links. And then on Wednesday, we're returning back so we can be AVGN. On Thursday, for Throwdown Thursday, I'm going to make a poll so that we can find out which game we're playing for Throwdown Thursday. And then on Sunday, we're doing Digimon like normal on uh, the Tyrone the God 3 Twitch channel. All right. And uh, TSS, you, what you got planned for this week? Okay, we got Tales of Symphonia coming up Friday night. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, EDT now, three hours of that. Um, and I'm going to have a Saturday bonus stream. If if the game comes in this week, then I will be having a bonus stream at 8 p.m. Eastern on Saturday with uh, Densha de Go, Hashiro Yamanote Sen. Uh, and uh, we'll be two hours for that just before. Uh, Terrell stream the insane game freak. He's he's uh, working his way up through uh, Yakuza Zero. So mm -hmm. one, if you want to if you want to watch my stuff, TSS underscore killer on Twitch and TSS killer without the underscore on Twitter. All right, perfect. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of our show for tonight. We hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you have yet to do so, make sure to follow us here on Twitch. Make sure to follow us at the Pokepod World on YouTube as well as on Twitter as well. 
to keep them growing and watch all the latest episodes of the Pokepod World podcast there as well. I do intend to do something later this week uh, for the channel just to make things a little bit more accessible for folks out there. Uh, so I'll keep you guys up to date on that. And uh, make sure once again to follow everything here. Tune in tomorrow for our playthrough of Heart Gold and Soul Silver as well as our uh, other shenanigans for the week. Once again, on Friday, we're going to be doing our reaction to the latest episode of PM2019. So looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, until then, everybody, we hope you guys enjoyed tonight's session. And we'll talk with all of you later in whatever video we make. Take care. And as always, well, TSS, what do we say? Wash your fucking hands. Thank you. Have a mm. nice day, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.